This story began in Jiangxi province in the city of Jinyang. In the medical clinics the voice of a doctor was heard who received the elder. The doctor touched the elder's head with two fingers and said that his tumor had grown in his head. Dr. Suk was very worried about the elder and asked how he was feeling and did he have a headache today. The man replied that the headache had only gotten worse, but he thought he could still stand it. The old man took a cup of tea and drank the hot tea. After that, he asked the doctor to just be honest with him and tell him everything as it really is and not deceive him. The old man was very upset because his tumor was growing and he asked the doctor how long he had left to live. Suk was very afraid to tell him about this, but still decided to be honest with him and said that now his internal qi energy is protecting his blood vessels, but soon he will lose his mind from unbearable pain. The doctor told him that soon he would not be able to wake up all day because of this pain. The man immediately finished his tea and put the cup on the table. The elder left the hospital and before saying goodbye to the doctor, he said that he no longer needed to return for treatment. He thanked Dr. Sook for everything she did for him. He turned around and started to leave, but before he left, he turned his head towards the doctor and said that while he was still alive, the doctor should come to his Lu family in his free time. Sook looked at the elder and could not believe that this magnificent man would soon pass away and he was surprised that this old man would so bravely accept the news that he did not have long to live. Elder Lu Jinshan began to slowly walk away into the distance and waved his hand to the doctor to say goodbye to him. The doctor bowed to the elder and asked him to take care of himself and be careful with his health. The old man simply silently began to walk away into the distance. It was a wonderful time of year because at that moment the cherry leaves began to fall. Elder Lu watched the leaves fall from this beautiful tree and said that he needed to start understanding everything right now. He remembered himself when he was still young, handsome and strong. The old man thought that all that he had built in his entire life was his Lu family, which he loved very much. He remembered the boys who were trained in martial arts and he remembered all these wonderful moments as he spent time with them together. Lu's precious family was the meaning of his life and he loved every moment spent with them. His son and his grandchildren were the people whom he loved more than anything in the world because they were his continuation and he did not regret anything. However, he was very upset that he would never be able to see his youngest granddaughter Seol grow up. He knew that she was a special child born with an immortal healthy body constitution. He was always sure that Seol was a talented child who would definitely bring glory to his family when he grew up. Elder Lu walked to the gates of his palace and waited until they opened immediately. The gate opened very slowly and red fog and bright white light began to appear from it. Lu immediately suspected that something very strange was happening here, but so far he did not understand what exactly happened here. Suddenly he felt a very disgusting strange smell and realized that it was the smell of blood, his face immediately wrinkled and he felt very disgusted by this smell. While he was not in the palace, something terrible happened here and while the patriarch was leaving for a while, he was not around, some kind of disaster immediately happened and he knew it. Lu saw a large crowd and began to run through this crowd, ordering everyone to move away and make way for him. When he was able to break through this whole crowd and came to the crime scene, he saw something very terrible. The corpses of killed soldiers lay on the earth and he immediately realized that some kind of battle had taken place here and many people had died during this battle. He looked around and tried to understand what happened here. He wanted to study everything and analyze. But all he saw were only the corpses of people, among whom were women and children. He I understood that the people who did this were real monsters. He walked near all these corpses and looked at their faces. He recognized his friends among these corpses and understood that these people had died. But he didn't know what happened here. He saw his daughter-in-law among the corpses and could not believe that she was also dead. He asked her to open her eyes, but she was already dead, he begged her to wake up again, but it was useless. Lu turned pale and realized that he felt very bad because his heart hurt a lot when he looked at his dead relatives and he decided to sit closer to them. He understood that they were all dead. He filmed what kind of crazy monster could do such evil and kill these beautiful people. Lu began to cry and tears flowed down his face and he screamed that he had lost everything that he loved so much. People communicated with each other and they were all at a loss because they did not know who could commit such evil. After all, the Lu family never had enemies. The elder took a knife and wanted to cut his throat and commit suicide. 
But people asked him to stop and asked the elder not to kill himself. People ran to the elder to stop him. They shouted that if he kills himself now, then no one will be able to take revenge on these scum for his family. Lu thought about revenge, but he understood that he would not be able to adequately take revenge on these monsters because he now has a very sick and old body, but the most important thing was that the problem was that he did not know who killed his family. Lu thought that he could no longer take revenge and it would be much better for him if he took his soul right now and joined his family. But suddenly he stopped because he heard a child's cry. It was the voice of a child who was still somewhere nearby. The elder immediately threw his knife to the ground and ran to look for the child. He found a large barrel that stood not far from him and from this barrel the cry of a child could be heard. He opened the lid of this barrel and looked at what was inside it. When Lu looked inside this barrel, he saw a child crying and immediately realized that it was his granddaughter who was still alive. It was Seol, his little granddaughter, and the elder immediately began to sob because he could not believe that any of his family members were still alive. He took her in his arms and began to hug her, he was incredibly happy when he found out that his little granddaughter was alive. He immediately ran inside the building with his granddaughter and at that moment he thought that it was all the work of those monsters who wanted to destroy his family and he understood that these monsters would return when they found out that his granddaughter was still alive. People began to shout joyfully that the youngest granddaughter was alive and assumed that the daughter-in-law had hidden this little girl before her death. A few minutes later the elder left the building and was very serious. He went to the podium from which he usually addresses people and asked the people who were now present here to help him bury his family in this city, but he said that he wanted to bury them with his own hands. He shouted very loudly that in front of all the witnesses who are now here, he wants to swear to heaven. He said that he will not rest until they paint this divine fire dragon spear that belongs to his family in the red color of the blood of these scoundrels who killed his family. He could never forgive the people who killed his sons, his daughter-in-law and his grandchildren for this act. He bit his lip with his teeth so hard that blood began to flow down his face and he said that the truth is on his side so he is not afraid of these scumbags. The old man moved very quickly through the forest and jumped from one point to another in a very short time, it seemed that this old man could move faster than many young people. He was thinking that several decades had already passed since he last used the art of fast travel. It was very difficult for him to use such martial art techniques because his body was already very old and weak. But he still continued to use these combat techniques in order to move quickly, he understood that survival now comes first for him and he must overcome his pain in order to protect his granddaughter. Suddenly, a sharp blade of a blade appeared in front of his face, which was already very close to his face and could have injured him. An unknown ninja appeared out of nowhere and wanted to attack the old man, but the elder managed to dodge this blow and did not receive damage. Lu himself was surprised that he still had such a good reaction and was able to dodge this blow using his reflexes developed in his youth. The ninja used the dagger that was built into his boot to strike again. Lu was able to dodge this blow again. While flying, he thought that it was an ambush and he was attacked for a reason, he saw that the ninja who attacked him was moving very quickly, but his movements were very simple. Lu understood that he still had a very long way to go and he could not spend much time on this ninja, so he had to quickly take care of him and kill him. After Lu struck, he immediately disappeared somewhere. Ninja stood in a defensive stance expecting that he would now receive a strong blow, but nothing happened and he did not understand what happened. Suddenly the ninja saw that this old man was now lying on the ground and holding his hand behind his back. Lu heard the sound of his back crunching and realized that his body was already too old and could no longer perform martial arts skills. He was very upset because he was very old and could not fight normally. Because if he was now ten years younger, this one would not have forgotten me already dead, but he understood that the safety of his granddaughter is now a priority. Lu got up from the ground and began to run very quickly. He understood that the situation could get even worse if the companions of this ninja came here now. The assassin saw that this old man was now going to run away from him and realized that he needed to catch up with him and he could not miss this old man. Lu felt that this ninja was catching up with him and therefore constantly asked his body to move a little faster in order to break away from this ninja. Lu turned his head and turned to this bastard, he said that if this killer still has a drop of compassion, then he should just leave them alone and the murder of an old man and a newborn child will be on his conscience. 
The old man understood that this ninja was unlikely to listen to his words and began to run even faster in order to break away from him suddenly. He saw that a sharp blade flew past him. Lu was angry that this brute killer kept attacking them. He realized that now it is not profitable for him to continue to run away because in this state he will lose anyway and he has only one option left. As Lu watched this killer as he approached him and realized that his only choice was to kill this ninja with one blow. The old man raised his spear and was preparing to strike, he understood that he only had one chance. The ninja saw that the old man was about to attack him and realized that he needed to dodge this attack. The old man swung his spear, looking for the right moment to throw it at the enemy, but at that moment the ninja jumped into the air. Lu understood his enemy's tactics and was able to find his body in the air, now all he had to do was throw his spear at the enemy. The ninja was flying from top to bottom and wanted to strike this old man from the air. Suddenly, the assassin released his two sharp knives from his hands and saw a bright light. Lu began to make his combination of gifts, which was called the family spear technique, and after that he released his spear from his hands and threw it at the enemy. The spear hit the enemy's body directly and pierced him through, this hit was called the desire for extreme speed. Lu threw his spear so hard that he was able to throw the ninja back and chain him to a tree. He had spent a lot of energy on this military equipment, and all this time his granddaughter was sitting in the bag behind her, watching everything in fear. Lu slowly began to approach the ninja who was hanging on the tree in order to take his spear back. The old man hit this ninja on the cheek with his palm and said that he warned the ninja that if he followed him then he would be lucky. Lu took off this killer's mask and looked closely at his face. The old man understood that his expectations were justified because he did not recognize the face of this person, he needed to find out who was behind him, but Lu understood that monsters like this guy would choose suicide instead of answering questions. He saw a black dragon tattoo on his body and realized that this was the only thing he could get from this guy, but he had never seen such tattoos before and for him it was an unusual tattoo. He suddenly heard his granddaughter start crying and immediately turned his head towards her. He said that little Seol was most likely very surprised by everything that was happening here, but he asked her not to be afraid because he would protect her. He looked at his granddaughter with very kind eyes and said that her grandfather would definitely protect her and would not let anyone offend her. Seol smiled and started laughing, she really loved it when a girl looked at her with a kind look and talked to her. Night came and they decided to make a short break in the mountains to rest and spend the night here to gain strength for the next day. Lu collected firewood in the area and made a fire, after which he began to cook food on this fire in the iron kazan, while the granddaughter carefully watched her grandfather. Grandfather stirred the soup with his stick and said that the child must probably be hungry, but if she waits a little then she will have a tasty meal. He thought that when he left, in a hurry, he took some cow's milk and household goods from the nearest village and who would have thought that he would steal and do something that he had never done in his life. When he prepared the soup there, he immediately poured it into a plate and told his granddaughter that the food was ready and she could safely eat this soup because her grandfather cooked it himself and it was safe to drink. The grandfather watched his granddaughter eat and praised her for eating very well. Seol finished a whole bowl of soup and started licking her lips, she was very happy and cheerful after eating. Lu patted the girl on the head and said that nothing bad would happen to her because he would protect her, he looked at how happy she was and said that this was the happiest child he had ever seen. Suddenly his head started to burn and he felt a lot of pain. Lu dropped the bowl of soup on the ground. He understood that this headache was associated with a tumor in his head, but he had never before felt such severe pain as now. He grabbed his head with both hands or screamed very loudly in pain because he wanted to stop her but didn't know how to do it. Lu remembered how the doctor told him that he would soon lose his mind from unbearable pain and after that he would never be able to wake up again. He grabbed his head with his hands or screamed loudly in pain. The girl did not understand what was happening to her grandfather and also began to cry. The old man remembered that the doctor gave him some kind of package and said that this thing could help if they had a very bad headache. Lu then asked the doctor why this item should work in medicine can no longer save him. The doctor said that this is not a medicine, it is a poison which is called a nerve suppressant pill and if you use this poison to fight the poison, then I from this nerve suppressant pill will suppress his swelling and continue his life for a while. The doctor said that this pill can only be used in case of emergency and therefore it is better for him to always carry it with him. 
Lu understood that he was already beginning to lose his mind and go crazy because of this pain and tried to find this cure. He knew that this poison is a drug that is used to torture prisoners, the poison causes them extreme pain but does not kill them and even strong material will feel pain as if his entire body is being destroyed. But, but he understood that if he didn't suppress this tumor using poison right now, he would simply die right here and now. Lu fell to the ground and began to hold his head with his hands, the pain only intensified and he felt that there was practically no time left and he would soon lose consciousness. He took a poison pill and started putting it in his mouth because he couldn't die and couldn't leave his granddaughter Seal alone. He put the pill in his mouth and swallowed it. When the poison pill entered his body, he began to feel strange sensations, his face turned blue and he told himself that it was just chi poison. He grabbed the ground with his hand and began to scrape the dirt with his fingers. His eyes began to become bloodshot and his veins began to appear on his body. He felt very strong pain and it began to appear on his face, he understood that he was different, but she did not become smaller. His face was blue and his whole skin turned blue, he screamed very loudly but the pain still continued. The forest that was in front of his eyes began to blur and he saw a very fuzzy picture. When he opened his eyes, the first thing he thought was that a lot of time had probably passed since he lost consciousness. He lay on the ground and thought that fortunately the poison had subsided and now he was not in as much pain as it was before. He couldn't believe that the pain had passed and it no longer bothered him, and the most important thing was that he was able to open his eyes and wake up again. He didn't know when his headache would come back and bother him. He could use poison to suppress his tumor. But these pills could still run out someday, they couldn't be used forever. The only thing he knew for sure was that he had to stay alive until he could ensure the safety of his granddaughter Seol. He knew that there was only one way to survive, to have a good body that could cure the tumor and protect his granddaughter from danger. He had to reconstruct his body in order to improve it. He had to do the reconstruction of the bones and flesh in the body to create a better body suitable for martial arts. However, he understood that in order to clear the closed chakras so that the reconstruction of his body would be more effective, only 180 years of practicing the internal energy of qi would be necessary. At the moment, his internal qi energy was about 150 years of practice and he didn't understand. Can he hold out with this body for some more time? He learned that such training to improve his body can take years or even decades. Until yesterday, he didn't even think about the fact that he wants to continue his life and do such things, but now he has no other choice and his mind is occupied with only one task. He was Seol's grandfather and the only person who could protect her and take care of her. After all, she had no other relatives. The old man understood that he did not have the opportunity to be weak or old and he must spend all his strength on protecting her and making a good life for her. He stood in a large field near a river and looked at the big mountains that he had to overcome on his way and promised himself that he would not die until he did everything possible for this girl. By nightfall they were able to reach a small settlement. Lu slowly walked towards the village and thought that for the last few days he had been eating only tasteless leftovers because he had no more provisions. He straightened his straw hat and thought that fortunately they were still lucky to find a small village. Lu talked to his granddaughter and told her that she must be very hungry now if she waits a little longer then he will be able to feed her because they have already arrived in the village. Lu suddenly felt a very strange sensation, as if his intuition was telling him that something bad was about to happen. He smelled blood again, but this time the smell was pleasant. Near one of the houses that was located in this village in Big Kazan, men were cooking several chickens. People talked about how even a beggar has sunny days and finally today each of them had a whole chicken and they were very glad that they could eat well today. People heard the voice of a man approaching them and saying that he smelled a very pleasant smell here and this stranger alerted the man. The beggar asked this stranger who he was and what he was doing here. Lu walked up to these men, took off his straw hat and said that he was just an ordinary hungry traveler who would like to have a little snack. He noticed the appearance of these men and immediately made his assumption that these people were most likely members of a sect of beggars. He looked at their clothes and saw the knots around their belts and immediately realized that one of them was a first-rank disciple and the other two men were second-rank disciples. He decided to take advantage of this and realized that it was possible to get from them not only food, but also some information. Lu asked these men if they could share a bowl of this delicious food with the old man. 
The beggar answered the old man that he could not believe that he had lived to see the day when such a noble man would ask him for food from the beggars. One guy shouted that taking food from the poor is unfair. Well, they immediately closed his mouth and the second man invited the old man to join because their sex are not stingy and they can share food. The old man thanked these kind people and said that, as always, the Sektanishevs are a very reliable and kind sect. The beggar scratched his head and said that he forgot the salt. They suddenly began to run behind the wall of the house and asked the old man to wait for them near the fire. He told them that they could take their time. He looked at this fire and was very happy because he understood that now he could finally eat normal food. The beggars were standing near the fence and one of the guys said that this old man was undoubtedly Lu Jinshan of the Seven Lu. He knew it by the clothes and the child on his back. He suggested to his comrades to catch this old man. But the only thing that stopped his friends was that there were rumors that this old man was an expert in martial arts. But the guy said that they don't have to worry about it because with just one look he can tell that this old man is just a bag of bones now and he assured his friends that the old man doesn't have enough strength to swing a weapon now. He picked up a bamboo club and said that they should attack this old man as soon as he gave them a signal. Suddenly they came around the corner and the man said that he had already put salt in the soup and forgot about it and now there was just something wrong with his head. But suddenly the expression on this guy's face changed when he saw the old man standing in front of him. Lu stood near the cauldron with food and said that this food had a very incredible taste. Did he ask them to succeed or did they agree on something around the corner? He poured the broth into a plate and gave it to his granddaughter so that she could also enjoy this incredibly tasty and amazing food. The old man asked these guys why they were going to attack him and was it related to the monsters that killed his family? The beggar was shocked that this old man heard their conversation behind the wall, he was amazed because this old man had such good hearing. Their leader immediately ordered his boys to attack this old man and kill him. They took their bamboo sticks and ran towards him to attack the old man. The first guy who ran up to the old man to hit him shouted that grandfather should treat this as a premature trip to hell. Lu was very calm at that moment, he took the spoon in his hand and slowly raised it up. He was very confident in his abilities and therefore was able to hit the bamboo stick with his small spoon. The beggar was not prepared for the fact that this old man was so strong and he broke his arm the moment his bamboo stick came into contact with a small spoon. The second man wanted to hit him from the back and before hitting him he shouted that he was pissed off about this damn old man. But suddenly he stopped in place and didn't even have time to strike, something happened that he clearly didn't expect. Lu threw his small spoon directly at this aggressive man's forehead and he fell to the ground. At that moment, a third man pounced on him from above and wanted to strike him on the head and kill the old man with this blow. Lu wiped his mustache with the remains of the soup that remained there and then raised his hand up. He protected himself with his hand and when the bamboo stick came into contact with his hand it simply broke in half. He grabbed this guy by the throat with his hand and lifted him into the air. He asked why they just attacked him. And asked if the beggars had somehow ordered them to do this. He wanted to know if the sect of beggars were also people who had something to do with ordering an attack on his family. Lu said that it makes no difference to him whether the beggar sect did it or someone else, it doesn't matter to him at all. He said that if this man doesn't tell him now about who did it, he will tear him apart here and kill him. The man who was behind at that moment said that he did not know who did it and they were not related to the culprits who attacked the Lu family. He said they were just following orders from the alliance. Lu asked about what specific alliance is this beggar talking about now. And he asked to tell everything about the order that the alliance gave them. The beggar didn't want to tell anything and just started crying and complaining that his arm was broken. He asked this old man to look at his broken arm and let them go. They gave him a piece of paper on which it was written that Patriarch Lu Jinshan is wanted as a murderer who killed innocent people because of him the alliance is dying. He couldn't believe his eyes because everything that was written in this piece of paper was not true and he didn't understand why the Muram Alliance wanted to hunt him. He crumpled up a sheet with information about his search and said that he didn't understand how they could write such nonsense. In order to find out the full story of what happened to this old man, you just need to ask the residents of Jinyang County. However, he could not ignore the fact that an order was issued to search for complex information. This means that the Muram alliance may be connected to the murder incident of his family. 
He understood that someone holding a high position in the Murino alliance was pulling the strings and making this mechanism move. This man ordered his family to be killed. Lu started running every morning to get back into shape. He filled his day with a lot of training every day and improved his body to become stronger. Now he realized that his enemy could be the Roman alliance itself and he had to prepare himself to fight them. He trained and did not stop for a second. He thought that he would have to devote at least five years to the reconstruction of his body. Lu walked up to a large stone and put his palm on it. He stood near a giant stone and wanted to do a workout that would help break such a big stone. His knees and joints hurt very much when he loaded himself with heavy training, but he understood that he had to endure this pain. He thought only that if it became clear to him that the Murum Alliance was behind the destruction of his family. He will destroy them just like he is now going to destroy this giant block of stone. He activated all his abilities that were inside his body and used the energy to destroy this stone. He knew only one thing that he needed to use his powers a million times more and maybe even ten million times more than now. Lu began to release a huge amount of energy from his body and felt that the stone began to crack when he touched it with his hand. He began to squeeze this stone and the structure of the stone immediately began to break. His strength was enough to break this giant block. However, there was still one question in his head that haunted him. He did not understand why the Roman alliance of orthodox sections defends righteousness but still commits such terrible acts. Lu heard his granddaughter begin to cry and he immediately turned his attention to her. He asked Seol if she was hungry. He said that he gave her a whole cup of milk but for some reason she didn't want to drink it and he didn't understand why. She decided to play around a little and threw away the cup of milk, but he managed to run up in time and grab it. Lu tried to explain to his granddaughter that she almost spilled this milk of which they have very little and she needs to drink it in order to grow well and be healthy. She did not want to drink this milk and threw it away with her hand. The old man immediately realized that this girl had a character like her father. He thought that the girls needed to eat anyway and suggested that she eat some fried rabbit meat. Seol was very happy when she saw the delicious meat, she smelled it and immediately became happy and saliva flowed from her mouth. Lu ask your granddaughter how she's going to eat this meat, because she doesn't have enough teeth to chew it. He asked his granddaughter to say the word grandfather if she was hungry. She really wanted to eat and therefore tried to repeat after her grandfather and name this word. He was delighted when he heard the first part of the word grandfather. He could not believe that she was actually able to repeat this word. Suddenly the girl finally finished the last part of the word and managed to call the old man grandfather. He was delighted because she could already speak and he understood that she was growing at an incredible speed. He was very happy because this girl had an immortal body design that gave her a difference and difference from other children. Lu smiled and said that this is truly an amazing child and he is very glad that this is his granddaughter. When she managed to say the word grandfather, she constantly repeated it and tried to say that she was hungry. He said that he couldn't give her meat and so he went to look for ingredients to cook porridge for her. Evening came and by this time they were able to get to a small town where they could find some food. Lu didn't know how common his wanted poster was in cities, so he decided to be careful not to get caught by other bounty hunters. He thought that now was a very good time because an ordinary woman was passing by him and was carrying something in her hands. He called this girl and apologized for distracting her, but he just needed to talk to her for a minute. He asked if it was possible to ask this girl for some food or porridge to feed the child. He said that she had not been eating properly for several days. The girl tilted her head towards this little girl and said that for such a cute child she always has some food. She said that she had some breast milk and could feed this little girl. Lu was very happy when he heard this. The girl said that for such a small child it is necessary to feed on breast milk in order to grow better. Lu thanked this sweet woman for her kindness. She politely asked him to turn aside while she fed this girl so that he would not watch her naked breasts. Lu said that he couldn't believe that he met such a noble person like this girl at such a late time on the outskirts of the village. He said that his granddaughter couldn't even finish her mother's milk. He said that he was in a bad mood for stealing cow's milk to feed her and was grateful that this girl came to their aid. He asked is it okay for her to eat other people's breast milk. He didn't understand why this girl wasn't answering him and asked her again, but he never got an answer. But instead, he heard women's steps moving away from him. He turned his head towards her and saw that this girl was running away. 
He said that this was madness and did not understand what the hell she was doing. She stole the child and began to run away with him, she shouted that now she will finally become rich right now. But suddenly she received a blow to her back with a heavy object and fell. Lu managed to catch up with this girl and neutralize her. He was even able to take his granddaughter from the hands of this girl. Lu took his granddaughter, who thought it was all a fun game, and after that, with his spear, he caught the clothes of the fleeing girl. He said that he couldn't believe that this woman turned out to be so crazy and asked why she was doing this. Suddenly he turned his head to the side and saw something very strange. To his right was a notice board on which hung two portraits of wanted people, there he and his granddaughter were. He was very surprised when he saw that in such a small town there was a poster saying that he was wanted. The poster said that Lu Jinshan is a crazy old man who kidnapped a little girl and carried her on his back. It was written there that whoever saves and brings a child to the Muram Alliance will receive a big reward. He was shocked when he saw this terrible inscription, he could not believe that these monsters treated him so cruelly. He immediately began to be afraid of all the people who were near him and constantly looked around so as not to attract unnecessary attention to himself. Now he had to always be on guard because even ordinary people were following him and their wanted posters could be placed throughout the province so everyone was looking for him. But three men approached the notice board and talked about how these two old men and girls were wanted everywhere. One guy went to the notice board and said that he heard that the Lu family was a very prestigious family and such an old man should have calmly but he chose to become crazy and steal the girl. Lu thought that all his life he valued honor more than anything else and he could not believe that the world would be so cruel and would be looking for him as a murderer and a demon who kidnapped a child. And one guy said that he heard that the family of the great Bayux in a neighboring village was also recently attacked and their whole family was killed at night. Lu heard the dialogue between these guys and couldn't believe his ears. The Buk family was even bigger than his family and they had many first-class martial artists in their family. He couldn't understand how they could be killed. The guy who stood near the notice board said that after their family was killed they could not find a single corpse of a baby. Lu realized that this was not a coincidence and that the same people attacked these two families. He said that his opponent is very serious because not any person can destroy such a large family in one night and he realized that this is actually the work of the Muram Alliance. But he didn't understand why they did this. Suddenly Seol started saying the word Grandpa loudly and trying to hug him. He remembered that when Seol was born, people made a lot of noise and rumors spread that she was born with an immortal sound and a body constitution, most likely the Murima Alliance is hunting for her to take away her chi. People said that it was a happy occasion for all of Jianghu that Seol was born with such a body structure that the greatest expert in history admired her. The man held a book in his hand and smiled. Lu understood that the Murima Alliance was well aware of the existence of Seol. In the end, the goal of these monsters was achieved and they killed all the members of his family but were never able to take the girl. He got angry because because of this damned garbage he is now in very big problems. He understood that he could fall into a state of shutdown of qi energy and become insane. The bandits saw this old man and said that he could not go far because he was already old and was carrying a child with him. They told this old man that he would make a mistake when he allowed them to survive and so they brought the best killer in the entire area here to deal with the old man. The killer said that he would be the person who would bring these two wanted men into the Moram Alliance. Lu said that he doesn't care at all anymore, I can't do whatever they want. The killer said that today is a very good night for him and he cannot believe that he has a chance to make a name for himself so easily. But suddenly this old man disappeared somewhere and he didn't understand what happened. Was this old man able to deceive them? The killer and the bandits did not understand where this old man had gone and how he was able to move so quickly. Lu was very angry at these guys and said that he would kill them because rage began to awaken in him and he began to lose his mind. They were very scared when they saw that behind them the voice of this old man was now heard and this voice sounded very scary. They began to discuss among themselves that they had definitely heard some strange voice, but they could not understand where this voice came from. At that moment, Lu jumped from roof to roof and moved very quickly, as if some closed chakra had been activated and endowed him with energy. He felt very strong surges of anger and understood that he would not be able to restrain it for long because he had almost fallen into a state of chi shutdown. And it was a very stupid situation. He thought that if he saw blood at that moment, 
this means that he would become insane and would justify the legend that the Muram Alliance tells about him. At this moment, his granddaughter, who was on his back, constantly repeated the word grandfather. He turned his head towards her and asked his granddaughter not to worry because he would not allow anyone to offend her and would not allow himself to lose consciousness again and repeat this mistake. Lu said that Seol is actually a lot of luck and happiness that exists in this world. Lu said that this little son did everything to save her grandfather and now he must save her. Lu moved very quickly across the rooftops and was very difficult to catch up with. After he found out that the whole world was hunting him and his beautiful granddaughter, he needed to go and find a safe place where no one could find them. They traveled through the forest and walked for so long that the straw hats began to head for the day and fell asleep. Lu walked for a very long time and he was already starting to get tired of constant travel, he felt that he would need to take a break but did not know when it would be better to do this. Since that moment, two whole months have already passed and all this time they have been traveling in search of a safe place. He pushed aside the branches with his spear and his and saw something amazing. He woke up his granddaughter and asked if she saw the same thing as him. Seol slowly opened her eyes and gradually began to wake up, she wanted to look at what grandfather was looking at now. Lu shouted that he had finally found him and he was very glad that after such a long journey he finally managed to come to the right place. He started laughing and said that this house was no different from the palace in which they lived before. He was happy because he saw that there was even a well in their yard and said that they were very lucky. Lu slowly began to open the door to the house and look around the room to make sure it was safe. He saw a lot of cobweb dust in this place and said that no one had been here for a long time. And this place was empty but it still looks very clean. He went up to the chest and the table and said that the furniture in this building is still as good as it was before and it has not changed a bit. He took a small box and said that it was a precious jade box and he wondered if there were accessories inside this box that could be sold. Inside the jade boxes were flying needles and when he looked at them, he thought that some expert on internal chi energy used to live here. He saw that a musical instrument called a seven-string zither was hanging on the wall and he was shocked that the previous owner of this house was a very interesting person and he had such a strange choice of things and activities. He said that he thought that the person who lived here was an unusual person and was clearly doing something interesting. When evening came, I immediately turned on the lights in the house and began to arrange this space so that I could live here. Lu entered the house with a table in his hands on which there was a bowl of food and told his granddaughter that food was already ready for her and praised the little girl for being able to wait well. He scooped food into a spoon and tried to feed his granddaughter, and at that moment she was trying to say a new word. She ate the first spoonful of food and immediately began to smile and her grandfather praised her for eating very well. Lu noticed that his granddaughter eats exactly the same as his youngest son when he was still very young. He thought that after a lifetime of practicing martial arts, he was now raising a child and finally he began to understand his daughter-in-law. He said that he needed to support them when they were together because he understood that he was responsible for them and had to protect them. He couldn't believe that everything would change so quickly and he would lose his chance to talk to them one last time. Seol happily looked at her grandfather and smiled, she was a ray of hope that made him live and move on. Lu fed his granddaughter the food he had prepared and cried. Every time he looked at her, he understood that this innocent child now had to live in such conditions because some idiots wanted to hunt her. He began to wipe away his tears and said that he was not crying, but smoke got into his eyes while he was cooking. But the granddaughter reached out to him with her hands and wanted to hug her grandfather. He said that he forgot to turn off the stove and therefore he needed to go outside and asked his granddaughter to sit in the room because he would be back soon. She looked at her grandfather in surprise because she didn't understand what was happening to him and why he was behaving so strangely. He was offended by himself for showing his granddaughter such a weak side of himself and he didn't want her to see him so pathetic. He looked at the sky and asked him. Will he really have to wander around the world for so long in search of peace for himself and his granddaughter? He couldn't believe that this was all happening to him. He thought that when he found out that the Muram Alliance was looking for him, he wanted to destroy them all so that they would stop hunting him and creating a threat to him and his granddaughter. But he thought that revenge could wait. Because now the most important thing for him is to raise his granddaughter so that she is happy and healthy. He went outside and saw that the weed fields in the yard were very fruitful and the well was also located near this field and it was very convenient. 
He started working in the field using tools and said that this is an ideal place to grow vegetables. He worked with a rake in the garden and constantly talked about how he would plant a lot of vegetables so that seal could eat them. He had been working in the garden since the morning and improving the field so that vegetables could be grown on it and suddenly he raised his hands up. Lou felt very severe pain in his back and began to scream very loudly in pain. The girl heard her grandfather screaming very loudly and immediately began repeating the words after him. She stood next to her grandfather and repeated after him all the words that he said or shouted in this way. She learned to talk. But Lou was very surprised when he saw that his granddaughter, for the first time in her entire life, was standing on her own and not crawling. He sat down and invited his granddaughter to approach him with her feet, he persuaded her to take her first steps. Seol slowly began to take her first step towards her grandfather, but suddenly she tripped over a stone that was lying on the ground and began to fall. Lou managed to catch his granddaughter and didn't let her fall. He said that this is an amazing child. And he can't believe that she has already started walking and talking at such a young age, because she is very small. He took this baby in his arms and smiled at her, after that she smiled at him. He said that the baby probably wants to play with her grandfather and she was immediately happy when she heard that they were going to play now. Grandfather put his straw hat on her head and took her hand, after which he helped her take her first steps on the earth and explained to her how to walk correctly. Night fell and there were a lot of different stars in the sky that were hiding under grey clouds. Lou spent the whole evening thinking that his granddaughter really took her first steps today and most likely she was tired, that's why she's sleeping so soundly and her sleeping face is no different from an angel. He thought that while she was sleeping he needed to go hunting in order to feed her meat tomorrow because her body was growing and she needed to eat a lot. He very quickly began to move through the forest in search of prey in order to feed himself and his beautiful granddaughter tomorrow. Lou thought that in the dark his senses are enhanced and he better senses the wild animals that roam this forest and now he can calmly use the art of body lighting to find these animals. He began to run very quickly through the forest and look for his prey. He had to find at least some traces that would lead him to the animal. Lou found a tree in the forest on which there were claw marks of some large animal and he thought that there must be a large elk nearby and if he does not stop this elk then this animal will destroy his garden. He decided to follow its territorial markings and try to catch this large animal and while he could smell it, he followed its trail. But suddenly he turned his head to the side and noticed something very strange, it was something that attracted his attention and made the old man stop. He was surprised that he saw people here, he didn't understand where they came from, because besides him and his granddaughter, there shouldn't be anyone here, because this place is deep in the mountains. The man told the two guys who were standing in front of him that they were late and asked what was happening to their faces now. He was trying to find out if these guys received the exporter tax. Lou understood from their dialogue that these were unusual people and these were bandits, and apparently this mountain was the refuge of these bandits. He asked these guys when other people came here. The guys told their leader that these people who came here were support from the Wudang sect and they were guarded by two Taoists who were constantly next to them. He said that because of these people, most likely his brothers were killed by these idiots and the younger one replied that it was so. They said that they also managed to kill one of the Taoist idiots and he heard that this guy was a second generation sect disciple. The main bandit asked what happened to the second guard. The guy answered him that when their assistants arrived, he ran away with his tail between his legs and was scared because he understood that they could kill him. The leader of the bandit started yelling at this guy for acting like a coward and said that this guy should have killed both of them they ran away to the cowardly girl. Lu listened to these bandits arguing among themselves and thought that they were right. After all, they should kill them both and destroy the evidence. He understands that since they mixed with the Wudang sect, in this case, a punitive squad will be formed against them, which will soon be here and arrange a bloodbath for them. Lu understood that the situation in this area was becoming very tense and problematic because this mountain was home to him and his granddaughter and he needed to draw a line before they intervened here again. The main bandit heard some strange noise in the depths of the forest and turned his attention to this place, but when he turned his head there was no one there and he became curious about what happened there. He immediately grabbed the blade that hung on his belt with his hand and asked what kind of rat is now hiding in the forest and is afraid to show itself to them. Lu showed himself to these people and came out from behind the bushes. He said that this is not the way to talk to elders who are respected people and calling an unknown person a rat can be very life-threatening. 
he put the spear on his shoulder and his hair fluttered very beautifully in the wind. He said that this bandit was not going to develop and would congratulate his new neighbor for settling here. The bandit started laughing when they saw this old man. They said that this is some crazy old man and they think that his children must have left him alone that is why he is acting so strange here now. But suddenly the bandits were able to properly look at the body of this old man and realize that just one look is enough to say that this old man is crazy from the moment he appeared here and he felt a very strange energy. The bandit turned to this old man and said that they own this mountain together with their gang and therefore if he does not want to die, then he better get out of here as soon as possible and never show himself again. After all, if he angers them, they will change their attitude and I will drive myself very rudely with him. Lu began to laugh and said that this mountain has no owner and he was very surprised that this mountain belongs to someone else besides nature itself. He suggested that these bandits go to his lair and inform their leader of the bandits that he now lives in this mountain. Suddenly his eyes turned red and his voice changed, his voice was like the voice of the devil and he said that if they appear here again he will simply kill them and shed their blood and therefore they better not even come near this place. The bandits got scared when they saw all the power and danger of this old man, they couldn't even believe that he was such a terrible person. The bandits very politely and humbly bowed to this unknown old man and said that they would immediately go to their lair and inform their boss that this elder now lives here. After that, they raised their heads and the main bandit said that the old man most likely expected that they would react to his words exactly like that. Lu replied that he did not expect such a reaction because he knew that these bandits would not actually respond to his threats. The main bandit said that this crazy old man decided to joke with them and therefore ordered his henchmen to attack him immediately. The little robber jumped on the old man and decided to attack him with his dagger. He said that this crazy old man will die today in the nature that he loves so much. Lu didn't know what the right thing to do was to ensure that these bandits never came to this place again and forgot about its existence. He decided to show them the huge difference between his strength and the strength they possess. Therefore, they decided to demonstrate their talents and easily repel all their attacks. Lu showed these loser bandits that he could, with one snap of his finger, deflect a blow from this bandit's blade. The bandit was not ready for such a blocking of his blow and flew back, his sword immediately broke into several parts and he did not even have time to notice it. The main bandit also decided to join the battle and attack this old man, he made a quick jump towards the crazy grandfather and decided to attack him. He stabbed with his blade in the hope that he would be able to damage this old man and finish him off as quickly as possible. He landed on the ground and said that he was very sorry for this poor old man because he should have immediately listened to them when they suggested that he leave on good terms. At that moment, the main bandit heard the voice of an old man behind him and was shocked that it was his grandfather who was still alive after receiving heavy damage from the dagger. Lu raised his hand up and was preparing to deliver one very strong blow to his opponent. And at that moment he said that unfortunately these stupid bandits did not understand what he was trying to say. He hit his opponent with his palm directly in the back and this strike is called a back lightning strike after this strike the opponents receive very heavy damage. The bandit began to scream very loudly in pain because he did not expect that this grandfather would be so strong and was not prepared for the fact that he would receive such great damage. The main bandit began to sit on the ground and writhe in pain, he said that he was in great pain, but the old man said that this bandit was exaggerating and the blow was not so strong and could be survived. Suddenly the bandit actually realized that he was not in as much pain as he thought. And it was all this old man's tricks. He got angry at this crazy grandfather and started showing his teeth. He wanted to take revenge on him somehow. He picked up his sword from the ground again and started screaming very loudly that he wanted to kill this crazy old man for what he had just done to him. Suddenly a dent appeared in the tree trunk and the guys began to look at this dent in fear, they did not understand that it had just happened. The bandit also turned his head back and began to look at this dent in the tree. He was very scared and did not understand what else this old man was capable of. Lu used his fast-moving technique to scare his opponents, he didn't want to beat them up, but he wanted to show them his incredible strength so that they would finally understand that it was better not to mess with him. Suddenly the trees began to break and made a strange sound. Lu was able to immediately break seven trees that were behind these bandits in a few seconds, when they turned their heads, they couldn't believe their eyes because it looked very strange. At this moment, the bandits understood that they were now being fought by a very serious enemy, 
and if they were still not dead, it meant that he simply did not want to kill them. Lu said that he just wanted to correct their manners and make them a little better and promised that he would let them go since this was their first meeting but for now he asked them to get lost from here. But suddenly at that moment a very large and strong man appeared from the darkness of the forest. He looked very dangerous and had a very deep voice. And this man looked like a very large and dangerous bandit, he was missing one eye and had a very strong build. He approached the bandit and asked what was going on here. Lu said that this was the first time he had seen such a sophisticated and strange person as this big guy and was surprised that this big man had learned martial arts skills and was good at them. The big man didn't pay any attention to this old man and asked his henchmen why are they here now arguing with this old man and just won't shut his mouth. The thug realized that he would have to do everything with his own hands and immediately attacked this old man with his big axe and said that all they had to do was just split this grandfather's head. Lu was ready for the fact that this giant could suddenly attack him and therefore prepared for this, he was able to dodge the blow of his axe in time and slipped under him. Axe blade stuck in the ground. Lu immediately decided to counterattack this brute and gave him a very strong uppercut from below in order to knock this giant off balance and try to break his jaw. Lu spent a lot of his internal energy on this blow and made this giant fly into the air and fly back. The big man was not prepared for the fact that he would receive such heavy damage and flew into the air. Now even small bandits were shocked that this old man was so strong, even a giant could not protect them and cope with this crazy old man. When this big guy fell to the ground, the earth began to shake and a lot of dust appeared in the air. Lu said that this will happen to all the idiots who want to fight the old man and I will not listen to his requests. He repeated once again that he warned them that he could let them out of here alive if they just listened and got lost and would never show themselves to him again. They didn't understand what to do because they were very scared and their bodies simply froze in place and they didn't know what they now needed to do with all this. Lu shouted that this strange feeling was happening to him again. He didn't understand why this terrible feeling always appeared at such an inopportune moment. The bandits saw that the old man fell to the ground and began to hold his head, they did not know what was happening to him and why he suddenly began to behave strangely. Lu ate a poison pill because he understood that he could not suddenly collapse and die now because his granddaughter was now at home alone. The bandits carefully watched this old man and tried to understand what he had just put in his mouth and why he ate this strange pill. They assumed that this old man had just eaten a pill to suppress nerves. But this pill was poison and they did not understand why this old man had just decided to eat poison. They understood that this old man was now in a weak position and realized that now was the best moment to attack him, because then it would be too late. They started kicking him and trying to attack him from different sides because they were already very tired of this damned old man. They beat this old man with their feet and hands and shouted at him for daring to come to their mountain and imagining himself to be the new owner here. Lu at that moment was lying on the ground and covering his head with his hands, he felt very bad due to the effects of the poison. And in addition to this, he was beaten by bandits. They said that they would not allow him to die an easy death. Therefore, they decided to torture him first. He realized that he was beginning to lose consciousness and the last thing he saw before he closed his eyes was the foot of one of the bandits approaching him. He began to lose consciousness and close his eyes, but he tried to resist this state because he remembered that his granddaughter was now alone at home. He didn't know what would happen next and all he thought about was that his granddaughter could now be left without her grandfather and something very terrible could happen to her. After some time, he opened his eyes and saw some unfamiliar robber hitting another bandit on the cheek with his palm. This bandit didn't understand why he was beating him now, he thought that he did everything right and he thought that he was being treated unfairly now. But the unknown bandit continued to hit this guy on the cheek with his palm and said that he had never met such stupid idiots as this one before. Lu opened his eyes and watched the big bandit beat up the smaller bandit and he immediately realized that most likely this big bandit was their leader. Lu was tied with chains and chained to a pole, he could not move and could not move his body. But the most important thing for him was that he was still alive and did not understand how much time had passed since he lost consciousness. The first thing he thought about when he opened his eyes was that his granddaughter was now alone at home and he did not understand what was happening to her and how long it had been since he lost consciousness. The main bandit noticed that this was a crazy old man who was brought to their lair, had just woken up and immediately paid attention to him. They saw that he had regained consciousness. 
This meant that now they could talk to him. Lu looked carefully at the man who was now standing in front of him and immediately realized that this was the bandit leader. Because his behavior was the same as usual among bandit leaders, the leader said that his children were very rude to this elder and they did not know who to deal with. Lu didn't understand why he constantly finds himself in situations that are very difficult for him to get out of, and he didn't understand why he now had to face this bandit. From the abandoned building the voice of the bandit leader was heard saying that his people were very rude towards the elder. He said that he wanted to apologize instead of his bandits for their behavior because they did not know who they were dealing with. The old man thought that the leader of the bandits who was standing in front of him was actually under the man and the old man imagined what exactly this man was planning but he did not want to play along with them. He said that he must return to his granddaughter right now, but these bandits chained him in steel chains and therefore he cannot now get out of this trap. The leader of the bandits continued to apologize to the elder, saying that if he had personally found out that such a neighbor lived next to him, he would have initially come to say hello. The old man said that if he was so sorry then why don't they just let him go. The leader of the bandits began to shout at his ward to immediately bring the keys and free the elder and the little bandit said that he had brought the keys. The bandit leader said that he is first going to remove the chain from the elder's body but the old man needs to wait a little because this process will take some time. The bandit put his key in the lock and loosened the chains, after which he asked the elder to ease his anger. As soon as the elder felt that he had been freed, he immediately struck the leader of the bandits with his knee directly in the chest. Leader the leader of the bandits at that moment felt all the strength and anger of the elder whom they chained and after the blow he began to fly back. The elder got tired of waiting for his hands to be freed from the chains and decided to free himself from them. The elder had incredible strength and inside him was an unusually large amount of internal chi energy and he tried to break the wooden pillar to which he was tied. The thug saw that the old man was trying to escape and immediately struck him with his axe in order to stop this old idiot because he could no longer stay in place and watch this. The elder began to run forward very quickly and was able to dodge the cook's blow in time. He managed to arrange it so that the axe fell straight into the iron shackles that bound his hands and freed his hands. And he dealt the strongest possible blow to this thug and threw him into the wall. After the thug hit the wall, he broke it and flew out into the street. The elder didn't want to just let this thug go and so he ran out into the street after him. The thug was very angry at this old man for hitting him so hard and the thug wanted to take revenge on this grandfather. But the elder did not want to waste his time on this fat idiot and therefore used his face as if there to make a jump. The elder pushed away from the face of this thug and jumped very high into the air. The thug tried to catch him but nothing worked and all he could do was just shout to the other bandits to stop this old man. The elder, at the moment of his flight, lowered his head down and saw that there were now a large number of bandits below him and he did not expect that there would be so many of them here. The thug of the bandits gave an order to his archers, who at that moment were on the protective wall, to start shooting at this old man and in any way make him fall to the ground. The elder began to cover his body with his hands and said that it would be difficult for him to dodge all these arrows but he must prepare to give at least one hand. The archers began to pull the bowstring to make a shot. They all aimed at the elder flying in the air. The leader of the bandits gave the order to the archers not to shoot the elder and ordered them to just let him go and let this grandfather go quietly. The elder did not understand what the order of the bandit leader was connected with. But the only thing he knew for sure was that now he could safely escape from here and not receive any damage. He calmly jumped over the fence and landed on the ground, after which he made a very quick dash forward. He ran very quickly and kept thinking that now his granddaughter was in danger because she was all alone and all the way he kept repeating that grandpa would be home in a minute. The leader of the bandits was delighted with the abilities that this elder possessed, he immediately realized that this was a real master of martial arts. The thug hit himself in the face with his palm and asked the leader of the bandits why he allowed this old man to be released so easily. The thug said that their people recently disappeared in the mountains and they were probably killed by this old martial artist. The leader of the bandits ordered this thug to shut up immediately because he does not understand at all what is happening now. The leader explained that he is trying to remove the problems that his subordinates created. He crossed his arms over his chest and said that the fate of the Black Mountain Blade depends on this old man and you can't just kill him. He ran very quickly to the house and constantly shouted the name of his granddaughter soul. He tried to find her to make sure she was okay. 
He couldn't find her for a couple of minutes and terrible thoughts began to come into his head that a mountain beast would enter their house and eat her. Suddenly the girl appeared behind the old man and ran very quickly towards him and cried. He sat down on one knee and hugged his granddaughter after that he said that now she doesn't have to worry because grandpa is already here. He said that it must have been very scary for a little girl like her to be alone for such a long time and asked her for forgiveness and said that he would not leave her alone again. The salt made strange sounds similar to the conversation in frogs, the old man asked the girl not to croak anymore. But the girl suddenly showed her grandfather that it was not her who was making such sounds, but these sounds were made by a frog that she was able to catch in her garden. Grandfather began to laugh when he saw that she had caught a frog and asked how she managed to catch this toad. The girl didn't answer anything and her grandfather just patted her on the head and said that she was a talented girl. He said that he had not been home for several hours and the girl must have become very hungry during this time, so he asked her to wait a little to prepare food. He wrinkled his face and saw that some people were approaching his house and this alerted the old man. He hid the girl behind his back and said that he had already warned the bandits not to come here anymore and not to chase him because he was very angry with them. The bandits looked at the elder and did not say anything. The historian assumed that they came here to finish the job and they want to fight again. The bandits fell to their knees and began to bow to the elder. They said that they had committed a grave sin and asked forgiveness to the old man for all their actions that they had not committed before him. He didn't understand why these bandits decided to come and apologize, but be that as it may, he couldn't mess with these bandits anymore. So he told them that they had better leave here. Suddenly the bandit leader came out of the forest and said that he brought the elder his spear to return it and it looked like a precious weapon but it fell when the elder was lost in knowledge. The leader of the bandits said that the old man would experience a lot of inconvenience living in these harsh mountains and it seems that he even has a little granddaughter with him, so he suggested that the old man and the bandits, his neighbors living on the same mountain, help each other. He said that this was all very strange and he asked them. Do they really think that he won't find out about dirty deeds? He took the spear and said that since they got involved with the Wudang sect, their destiny as a black mountain blade is like a candle in the wind and can quickly fade away. He said that the bandits probably want to use an elder who knows martial arts to somehow prepare for the meeting for destruction. He started to get angry and said that if they were trying to perform a sloppy trick to suddenly attack the elder, then they had better retreat back immediately. The leader of the bandits said that he understood the old man's concern and once again asked for forgiveness for being rude earlier. He said that if the elder needed anything, he could ask the bandits for it and they would find it in the mountains at any time. He put a white bag on the ground and said that this was a gift that was not brought as an apology and asked the elder to accept their gift. After that, the bandits apologized to the elder and brought him their gifts, they immediately turned around and calmly left and the elder watched them leave the territory of his house. Salt immediately climbed into the bag that these bandits had just brought. The elder was scared when he saw that she herself climbed into this bag. He started laughing and took his granddaughter in his hands and then pulled her out of the bag. But suddenly the girl pulled out a dangerous snake from the bag, which was very angry because her peace was disturbed. The snake was angry and immediately decided to bite the person who pulled it out of the bag in which it was hiding. The elder immediately hit this snake on the head with his hand so that it would calm down and lose consciousness, and at that moment he thought that the bandits decided to put the snake in his bag. He took this snake in his hand and realized that this snake well increases resistance to poisons, but he still did not understand why the bandits put the snake there. When he opened this bag you saw that they left him some meat and other edible supplies and in the end they were not completely rude and decided to give it a gift from the bottom of their hearts. The old man and his granddaughter returned home and began preparing food for a delicious dinner. The grandfather very quickly prepared the food that the bandits brought them and, together with his granddaughter, quickly emptied the plates. After they ate, they lay down on the floor to rest and grandpa said that he ate very well and he hadn't felt so full for a long time and finally he felt that now he could live. The girl made a strange sound and confirmed her grandpa's words. He rested a little and realized that now there is no time to rest and he needs to act very quickly because he has little time. Grandfather sat in the lotus position and began to meditate. He thought that he never knows when he might break down and get into trouble. Therefore, he will have to practice controlling the breathing of qi energy when he has free time. 
he had to achieve complete recovery of his body as soon as possible so that next time he wouldn't have the same problems as with these bandits. He said that he must restore his body at any cost and he will definitely be able to do it. He had to become strong and restore his body in order to protect his granddaughter and take revenge on the people who killed his family. He knew that now a very important goal and meaning of life appeared in his life, for the sake of which he must continue to exist every day. Sol didn't know what grandfather had just done, but she decided to repeat after him in order to be as strong as grandfather. He started laughing because he realized that the baby was now repeating his movements after him and was also learning to meditate. He touched her back with his hand and said that it was better to start training her inner art as early as possible and the younger the person, the less cloudiness in the body, so the effect doubles. He touched her back with his hand and tried to transfer his chi energy so that it would develop faster. He said he could help her harness this energy. But suddenly he felt that it was very strange and saw that a huge amount of energy was flying out of her body. He realized that there was absolutely no cloudy or black energy in her blood vessels and the blood vessels through which the energy flowed were wide open, but this was impossible. He said that this means that the speed at which her internal energy and art accumulate is tens of times higher than that of other people, since the flow of energy is not blocked, there are no replacements when performing martial arts. He said that her ability is called a mortal sound and body and in this case even more energy can be drawn out of her. He decided to use a technique called One Heavenly Cycle and this is the process of accumulating true chi in the chi center by passing it through the bloodstream of the whole body and reaccumulating it in the chi center. She was just sleeping at that moment and didn't even imagine that her body accumulates internal energy almost 20 times higher than the internal energy that can be accumulated in One Heavenly Cycle. He thought that now it was better for him to stop and give her a rest because she was still too small for such heavy loads. He covered her with a blanket and said that his family's method of training internal energy was called the palm of the heavenly earth. This technique is based on frequency and an indomitable spirit. He lowered his head down and said that it increases the limit of internal energy accumulation but the disadvantage is slow progress compared to the training methods of other major sects. But what surprised him most at that moment was that her internal constitution could solve even this problem, and after that he once again covered her with a blanket and stroked her head. He went outside to look at the moon and stars and decided to talk to the moon so that he would not be bored. He sat on a bench and said that it was very difficult for him because he lacked energy and if he were a little younger it would be easier for him. Suddenly he turned his head to the side and saw the bottle that the bandits gave him. Grandfather closed his eyes and said that wild ginseng wine and white snake could be good for him, but did these bandits really think that he would fall into the trap of these mountain bandits, and who do they even take old man Lu to be? Literally a few minutes later a dead snake was already roasting on the fire. Lu at this moment drank delicious wine from the cup and enjoyed the taste of this wine. He enjoyed this moment and thought that a lot of time had passed since he last tasted such delicious wine. After that, he took a bite of the snake's meat and began to chew it. Lu said that it was very tasty and he enjoyed the amazing taste of this snake delicacy. The old man said that this is why this world is better even if you have to roll in a pile of dung and that means that living is better than dying even if someone has to suffer a lot. He looked at the beautiful moon which was shining very brightly and thought that now it was time to drink another glass of delicious wine. He saw that the moon began to change its shape and some kind of appendage appeared. The moon resembled some kind of liquid object from which at that second a large drop of white light flew out. He looked at the sky and couldn't believe his eyes at that moment he was so surprised that he even poured something out of his cup. Suddenly this white energy began to fly straight from the moon to the earth and it resembled a large light snake. Lu didn't understand what it was and why he just happened to see this beautiful light beam that moves in space on its own. He saw some kind of light beam flying over his head and quickly flying towards the forest. He was very surprised. After all, he had never seen anything like this before, and this light wandering in the air began to lure him. Lu did not understand why this flying light appeared and he assumed that it was all from alcohol. He began to run towards this beam because he wanted to see it up close and take a closer look. At that moment he was like an obsessed man who wanted to touch something so beautiful. He ran very quickly towards this flying light and thought that he had once heard a similar legend. This legend was about a creature that was called Blue Fur because it was an animal that had eaten more than 1,000 people in the last 1,200 years. This creature is usually called a man-eating wolf because of its blue eyes because this is how people usually see this monster. 
Lou hid behind a bush and couldn't believe that the blue wolf was actually here and this myth turned out to be real. He thought there that if he is now on this mountain with bandits next door, then he must make a choice to leave everything and run away from here with his granddaughter right now. Or he had another option and for which he needed to start accumulating energy before the battle. The blue wolf felt the presence of a man next to him and the old man realized that he would have to kill this wolf right now at any cost in order to protect his granddaughter and his new home from this monster. The blue wolf pounced on the old man and opened his mouth wide to make a bite, but the elder was already ready for this and so he accumulated energy in his fist in order to strike back. He used a strike called the Heavenly Earth Palm of the Lu family, which belongs to the first style. He used his furious dragon grasping punch and after that, his hand became several times larger and hit the wolf right in its mouth. The wolf did not expect that this old man would hit him with such a strong blow and after that he flew up and turned around in the air. Lu felt that his hand was very painful after the blow, because the wolf's head looked like a piece of iron and he realized that it was very difficult to fight the wolf with his bare hands. The wolf calmly stood up on his paws, shook himself off and prepared for the next attack. He suffered virtually no damage. Lu understood that this wolf was causing him anxiety and he did not understand why he had to face this wolf when he did not have a spear with him. But he no longer had elections and in any case he would have had to fight the blue wolf in order to protect himself. He raised his head up and saw that the wolf for some reason decided to jump over him and not attack. He turned his head back and saw that this animal was now trying to get away from him, this wolf turned out to be smarter than it might seem at first glance. The wolf was heading towards the house where Sol was now sleeping and Lu immediately understood why this animal was running there. Lu assumed that the blue wolf smelled his granddaughter and realized that it was easy prey, so he began to run towards the house. The blue wolf ran forward very quickly and quickly picked up speed. Lu realized that there was no time to waste now and used his internal chi energy to catch up with this wolf. He deliberately fell to the ground in order to slide along the ground and attack the wolf from below. When Lu found himself directly under the wolf, he kicked him in the chest and it was a very strong blow. The blue wolf felt severe pain and began to whine, he suddenly saw that there was an old man under his body and at that moment the wolf was flying in the air. The ox fell to the ground and hit its head after falling out, cracks appeared on the ground. Lu decided to take advantage of the fact that the animals should now recover from the fall and so he made a dash towards the house. The wolf suddenly jumped to his paws and began to shake himself off, after which he tried to find his opponent with his eyes. Vok did not understand where his opponent had disappeared, but he heard the voice of this old man and smelled him somewhere nearby. Lu stood on the roof and held his spear in his hands, he told this wolf that no one dares to approach his granddaughter, especially to eat. He activated the ability of his spear and around the spear man or fiery streams of energy appeared, the historian said that now I cannot fight again. The animal was very angry because this old man had been resisting for so long and did not want to become an easy prey. Lu's eyes suddenly began to glow with white light and magical energy was released from them. The wolf also began to emit white magical energy from his eyes and it seemed that he was now preparing for battle. But suddenly the blue wolf decided to turn around and go towards the forest, as if he admitted defeat in front of this elder. Lu didn't understand why his opponent was leaving now. He thought that he could have confused this animal with some other monster because the behavior of this wolf is not similar to the behavior of the blue wolf from myths and legends. Lu watched this wolf leave and thought that in myths and legends it is always said that the blue wolf never gives up the prey he has his eye on. Lu understood that this wolf would now definitely hide somewhere and would look for an opportunity to attack and eat his granddaughter again. Morning came in the forest at that moment it was very quiet and calm, the green mountains existed in harmony with the green forests. Lu decided to hit the road in the morning and at that moment he thought that if he were alone, he would not even avoid a bloody fight with this monster. But now he knew that he couldn't leave his granddaughter alone even for a minute and go fight because something could happen to him here, now it's too dangerous. He turned his head back and thought that they barely managed to cultivate the field and the house and now they need to go somewhere again. He saw a bottle that still had wine in it yesterday and thought that the bandits from the Black Blade clan who live on this mountain would also be in danger. He thought that these bandits and we don't like us, but at least they need to be warned so that they are careful and know that a blue wolf now lives in the forest. When Lu and his granddaughter approached the bandits camp, he saw that a huge hole had appeared in their wooden fence. 
he decided not to waste time and enter their camp through this hole in the fence. When he climbed up and came closer to the fence, it seemed to him that it was too quiet in the camp today and it was very strange for a bandit camp to hear such silence. The elder suggested that the wolf managed to visit the bandit camp yesterday and left behind several corpses. The leader of the bandits saw the elder and said that he was very glad that the great master came to them today. He bowed and said that it was time to formally introduce himself and said that his name is Pang Ho and he is the leader of these bandits from the Black Mountain Blade Gang. Lu said that he came here to warn the bandits about a large wolf that was found in the forest, but apparently he was already too late. Pang Ho guessed that the blue wolf had his eye on this place. Lu said that he could not even imagine that a wolf would openly invade the living quarters of a bandit group and carry out a massacre. Pang Ho said that he thought that the wolf enjoyed killing and not hunting. Lu said that wolves usually don't do this, but this beast is an unusual wolf. And this is a real demon in the form of a wolf. He turned his head back and told the bandits that he had finished all his business in this place and was going to leave, so he asked the bandits to be careful. When the elder began to approach the exit from the bandit camp, he heard the voice of Pang Ho who called him by name Elder Lu Jinshan and asked him to stop. Lu froze at this moment, then turned his head and asked the leader of the bandit. Did he also see the wanted poster? Pang Hua said that he saw this leaflet and he knows that the man in front of him is the family elder of the only remaining surviving member of the Lu clan. He suggested that the Murima Alliance is now hunting for the elder. Lu asked why the bandits did not tell the authorities that they had found him. After all, they could have received a good reward and perhaps they would even be able to quell discontent with the Wudang sect. Pang Ho said that the elder was slandered in this announcement. He said that after they personally met the elder, they realized that the wanted ad was a dirty trick. Pang Ho said that he saw the old man's relationship with his beloved granddaughter and realized that the grandfather did not kidnap his granddaughter, he just wanted to save her. PWNG Ho said that they are not planning to sell an innocent old man and his little granddaughter just to look good in front of these idiots who hate them. The bandits bowed to the elder and began to beg him for his grandfather to help them cope with the Wudang sect and defeat the blue wolf that was attacking their camp. Lu thought about what happened to these guys, perhaps they will be able to capture the blue wolf first and he will not have to leave the house that he built with such difficulty. The elder asked the bandit. Did the blue wolf really make such a big hole in the fence? Pang Ho said that this hole was made by blue wolves and does not plan to repair the fence in the near future. Lu ordered these bandits to leave everything as is and instead mobilized the entire workforce to prepare water tree branches straw bales. Pang Ho lowered his head and said that they will do whatever Elder Lu orders them to do. But Lu said that he had one more request and he needed someone who would take on an extremely important role. Pang said that he can do it, but he needs to find out what exactly needs to be done. Lu replied that he needed another person who had a very thick physique and looked like a tasty piece of meat. They looked at the thug who was standing next to them and thought that he was perfect for this role. The thug at that moment only realized that we were talking about him and he would have to be bait for this blue wolf. Lu said that there was a lot to be done now and ordered the bandit to hurry up and start acting right now. Pang asked how many days they have to prepare for this task. Lu said that days are too long, because this demon will not wait that long. Sol was very tired at that moment and slept in her grandfather's bag. Lu said that they are not going hunting tonight and this demon must be dealt with as quickly as possible. Night fell and the elder said that this night would be the last walk for this blue wolf. Near the hole in the fence stood the same thug who that night they decided to use to bait the blue wolf. He stood motionless in one place and looked into the distance all this time, he was preparing for the fact that anything could happen today and this demon could eat him. Strange sounds began to be heard from the forest, quickly approaching and becoming louder. The thug saw two blue lights flying very quickly towards him and his body at that moment began to shake with fear. The face of this blue wolf appeared from behind the trees and looked at the thug as if it were a tasty piece of meat. The bully ordered this animal to come here and fight him because tonight he is going to fill his stomach with wolf meat. The wolf opened his mouth wide and was about to bite off the head of this thug in order to feast on his tasty meat. The thug managed to jump to the side in time and cover his head with his hands in order to escape. The wolf landed near the body of the thug and began to get angry because his prey was running away from him. But the blue wolf did not expect that they had prepared a trap for him here, into which he had just successfully fallen. 
the blue wolf slowly began to fly down the pit that had been prepared for him as a trap. Hang Ho raised his hand up and ordered the archers to immediately start firing so Wolf could kill him. A few hours ago, Pang Ho called the elder and showed him the hole. The leader of the bandits said that they dug as deep as the elders ordered them to do and he suggested setting spears under the trap. Lu said that the copy below will not destroy or pierce the wolf and will only damage it and it is better to use archers for this. The wolf tried to get out of this hole, but he was constantly attacked by many arrows and left wounds on his body. Lu suggested using this water at the bottom of the pit instead of a copy and making a small pond. The elder understood that if they did not use water at the bottom of the trap, it could tie the legs of this monster for some time and at that moment they would not be able to attack him. The bandits took spears to attack this monster. The robbers attacked the enemy in several ranks, as soon as the first line threw out their copies, the next bandits immediately ran after them and threw their spears. The elder ordered at that moment to extract as much blood as possible from the wolf's body so that he would lose some of his strength. But the elder still understood that this method would not help them kill this blue wolf once and for all. Lu immediately warned the bandits that this trap would not be able to detain this wolf for long and in the end he would still crawl out of the hole. He walked up to the edge and said that the blue wolf was starting to crawl out, but they had already thrown all the copies of the arrow at him that they had. Suddenly the bandits heard a loud cry from an elder who ordered everyone to step aside and not disturb him. Lu kicked off the ground and made a rapid jump up. He flew so fast as if no one could notice his movement. He was holding his spear in his hand, which at that moment had already begun to burn with a bright flame, and the elder was going to kill this monster with his own hands. Lu was flying down, I was flying at incredible speed, he was like a flash that could pierce the body of any enemy at any moment. Lu almost approached the blue wolf and they looked into each other's eyes at that moment. They both understood that only one could survive. A very strong explosion suddenly occurred in the pit and after the explosion the fire began to scatter in different directions. The leader of the bandits ordered his robber subjects to immediately close the entrance to this pit. The robbers spent the whole day preparing the logs in order to close the pit in time, and after the leader ordered them, they did not immediately begin to carry the logs to this pit. Pang Ho ordered his bandits to make sure that the logs were able to completely close the entrance to the pit. Lu thrust his spear into the body of this wolf and at that moment he realized that the animal's body was bleeding and was bleeding, but this was still not enough to kill him. There was a battle going on underground between the elder and the blue wolf. They knew that only one could get out of this trap and so they had to fight to the death. The blue wolf tried to take the spear from the old man's hands with his paw so that the enemy no longer had weapons. Lu realized that thanks to their trap, the wolf could now fight using only his front paws. The sounds of a battle and an earthquake were heard from under the earth, something very terrible happened underground, after which the earth shook. Pang Ho looked in surprise at the trap that had not been created and was frightened by this strange sound from underground because he did not know what happened inside this trap. The logs that blocked the exit from the trap began to shake very slowly in different directions and everyone felt that a small earthquake was starting on earth. Suddenly the logs stopped and inside the pit it became very quiet, everyone became interested in what was happening there now. Pang didn't understand what just happened inside the pit, but he assumed that the elder was able to defeat the wolf and everything was finally over. Brood approached the leader of the bandits and offered to dismantle the logs and carry them away in order to open the entrance to the pit and see what happened there. They slowly began to remove the logs and open the entrance to find out what was inside. When the bandits began to look down, they talked among themselves about how they couldn't see anything because it was very dark below, but they didn't smell the strong smell of blood. Elder Lu sat at the bottom of the cave with his eyes closed, his whole body was stained with blood and he just sat silently and waited for him to be freed. He sat at the bottom of the cave underground on one knee and under him was the dead body of a blue wolf. When the leader of the bandit you see that the elder managed to defeat the blue wolf, he immediately began joyfully shouting that they managed to do it. Pang Ho suddenly made a displeased expression on his face because he did not see the positive reaction from the elder, he wondered why the elder was not rejoicing with them. The Pang Ho raised his eyes and head up and told the bandits that they were starting to piss him off because they were just standing and watching. He ordered this idiot to quickly pull him out of the hole because he was very tired and starting to die from exhaustion. The bandits began jumping joyfully and shouting that the elder was able to defeat the blue wolf alone. 
They could not stop their joy and continued to jump for joy and admire the great strength of this old man. Lu raised his head up and saw a small group of idiots jumping joyfully and worshipping him. The elder said that he perfectly understands their joy, but he wants these brats to finally pull him out of this stinking hole. Lu said that he hasn't felt as good as he does now for a long time and at this moment he feels young. He remembered the wonderful moments of his life when he was still young and first came to Jianghu to conquer the whole world. At night, he and his granddaughter returned to their home and decided to finally rest after such a hard day. Lu looked at his granddaughter, who at that moment was sleeping very sweetly, and thought that he was incredibly glad that they could continue to live in this house and not feel danger near them. He began to touch his shoulder and said that today he overdid it when he fought with this wolf and the pain in his muscles did not go away even after taking a bath. He took the blue pill in his hand and began to examine it carefully. Lu felt the shape of this pill with his fingers and thought that this bright blue light gives an understanding that this is the inner core of a blue wolf. He remembered the moment from the battle in which he hit the wolf in the head and the core fell out of his mouth. He thought that he could gain enormous internal energy by eating this core. But the problem was that he could die or lose his internal energy forever if he ate this core. Lu thought that now there is no way he can risk his life like that and he must carefully decide to use this core when he really needs it. Suddenly the old man saw that his granddaughter had just woken up and was standing next to him with a dissatisfied face. The grandfather laughed and asked her why she decided to wake up so early. Suddenly she jumped on him and decided to take the blue wolf cores from her grandfather, he immediately removed his hand and told his granddaughter that she was a scoundrel and she should not eat it. It was at that moment that he felt a very strong pain in his head and then this pain spread throughout his body. Lu knew that this moment had come again and he needed to immediately take a pill to suppress nervousness in order to stay alive. He took out a pill from his inner clothing pocket and put it in his mouth to overcome his headache. Lu fell to the floor and tried to return himself to normal, but with every second he only got worse and his granddaughter at that moment was sitting next to him and did not understand what was happening to her grandfather again. Loud screams of the old man could be heard from their house, it was heard that he was suffering from pain. It was difficult for him to resist this pain. His hand turned red and large veins began to appear on it. He tried to control his hand, but he was very bad at it, and next to his hand at that moment lay the blue core of a wolf. Sol saw that the beautiful tablet that she wanted to take from her grandfather is now right next to her and her grandfather is not taking it. Lu tried to resist his pain and tried to explain to the girl that this kernel is very dangerous and it is better for her not to eat it. He felt his eyes slowly begin to close and he tried to explain once again that she was still small and she couldn't eat this, but he didn't have enough strength and he fell asleep. She was sitting in the corner of the room and doing something, but because her back was turned it was hard to understand what exactly she was doing. Lu was finally able to open his eyes and tried to understand how much time had passed since he lost consciousness and fell asleep. He suddenly jumped up from the floor and raised his head, the first thing he thought was that he did not have a blue core and he was afraid that the girl could eat him while he was passed out. He turned his head back and saw his granddaughter who was sitting near the wall and doing something. He was scared because he didn't understand what he was doing. She slowly began to turn her head and it was clear from her face that she now had something in her mouth. Her face at that moment was red and the girl was able to say the word delicious after she turned her head. Lu understood that this situation was a real disaster and he began to shout very loudly that this should not have happened and he could not control this moment. Lu understood that he needed to correct this situation and help the baby cleanse her body as quickly as possible because her face at that moment was already red. Sol began to feel a strange pain in her body or her face turned even redder and she did not understand what was happening. Lu took her with his hands behind her back and tried to clear her energy so that this blue core would not harm her and tried to give her his energy. Lu said that her dantian should have already exploded and taken her life at this moment. But she is still alive, the toxicity of the inner core was neutralized by her immortal structure and sound body. He understood that if the girl did not completely absorb this energy now, she could die. The old man understood that it would be very difficult to save her because the vessel of conception is an impregnable vessel which is a fortress and it had just been unlocked and the toxicity of the inner core disappeared and united with the constitution of her body. She is now able to emit true energy from her body even her control vessel has been unlocked her middle dantian has just opened. Lu thought that her decision to eat this blue core was not such a bad decision. 
He saw how she slowly began to fly into the air and this meant that she was now beginning to reconstruct her body. She became a child who had just been able to be born again and gain a new body reconstruction. In her small and beautiful eyes at that moment there was the entire universe that flowed through her internal veins and chakras. A bright green light suddenly appeared from their house and illuminated the space on the street with powerful rays. Lu covered his face with his hand and began to hide from this light because it was hard for him to look at this strong beam. He thought at that moment that she managed to absorb all the true qi energy into her middle dantian and therefore she became even stronger. He saw that her hair had now grown and she could calmly stand on her own two feet, he immediately realized that the girl was a little different from the one she was before she ate the blue core. Lu reached out to his granddaughter and asked if she was okay and how she was feeling. He wanted to make sure nothing bad happened to her. But as soon as he touched her with his finger, she immediately made a sharp jerk forward and disappeared somewhere. Sol began to run very quickly and was happy that now she could not only walk but also run incredibly fast. Lu couldn't believe his eyes, he saw how his little granddaughter had just started running. But just a few minutes ago, she couldn't even walk, and now she can run so fast that she can move across the ceiling. He smiled and thought that all his life he had been training his internal chi energy but could not achieve restoration of his body and could not even think that his granddaughter would be the first to achieve this. He watched the night gradually flow into morning and thought that he had the most extraordinary granddaughter in the whole world. When he went outside, he saw that a large bag was lying on his doorstep again. Lu assumed that these weaklings from the Black Blade Bandit clan brought them meat again, but he didn't understand why they did it because he didn't ask them and knows that they themselves don't have enough money for food. Lu thought that no matter what, he should still be grateful to these bandits and enjoy this delicious food right now. The old man was slowly frying the meat on the fire and turning it with a spit, but suddenly a girl ran past him and he heard a loud whistle. He saw the girl quickly running around their yard and thought that this scoundrel was very energetic after eating the blue kernel. He thought that she had had enough of running around so much and finally needed to calm her down. Lu saw how the girl began to run very quickly towards the forest and shouted very loudly to her that she was still too small to run too far but he thought that in an instant she had acquired physical strength close to the strength of the indestructible Buddha and he would not worry about her. But suddenly he thought that the punitive forces of the Wudang sect should soon arrive in their forest to attack the camp of the Black Blade robbers. He lowered his head down and began to remember the dialogue between him and the bandit leader. Hang Ho said that in fact they served in the army about ten years ago and they deserted because they did not want to participate in the rebellion of their boss whose name was General Yang Yua. Lu took a cup of alcohol and drank delicious wine after that, he said that all the bandits simply made a decision based on their beliefs and there is nothing wrong with that and it is not their fault that they decided to become deserters. Pang Ho said that everything is so and even after they hid on this mountain they never touched civilians and only stole the property of corrupt officials and merchants who agreed with them. Lu did not close his eyes and thought that who is he to help these bandits when he has his own problems and until he achieves the restoration of his body and he, too, will have to live with bated breath. At that moment, his granddaughter suddenly bumped into him and shouted in a joyful voice that she wanted to hug her grandfather. She pushed him onto his back and he fell after that, he said that if she jumps on him like that a few more times, then 100%, she will kill him. Lu saw that his granddaughter suddenly fell asleep on his chest and thought that she could finally get tired and fall asleep after running all day long. He hugged her with his hand and thought that even if she underwent body reconstruction, she is still a child and it is normal for him to refuse body restoration at that age. He understood that the most important task for him was to do everything to protect his granddaughter and not allow anyone to offend her. Suddenly very loud screams were heard in the forest. Lu held his granddaughter in his arms and hugged her at that moment, she was still sleeping. The scream that came from the forest became louder and louder every second. The elder suggested that these people could have already come to the bandit camp to deal with them, but he did not believe that they appeared here so quickly. It was one of the nine great sects, one great clan Wudang sect. When the elder hears his name, they are filled with wrath as they are a great force in the Murima alliance. Lu wanted to drive these people out of the forest as quickly as possible because he has his own grievances against them. But the old man suddenly realized that his intervention in this conflict would not end well and without his intervention these bandits would be able to pay off. Lu understood that in fact he should sting the weak bandits because they are in no way capable of resisting this great clan. 
A warrior from the Wudang clan put a sword to the neck of one of the bandits and forced the bandit to tell where the camp of the Black Blade clan was located. Next to them lay the corpses of dead bandits, they died in agony because they did not want to tell the location of the camp and now they were brutally killed and deprived of a limb of their body. The bandit said that he did not want to be carried around for a long time and asked to kill him as quickly as possible and stop waving his dirty sword. The warrior was very angry at this bandit, but he understood that this guy was the only one left alive from the entire gang, which they had not just caught. He raised his sword up and said that this bandit has no right to open his dirty mouth and the second warrior offered to cut off this vile bandit's tongue. The bandit was preparing to be killed, and suddenly he heard that one of the warriors wanted to cut off his hand before killing him. When the warrior's sword was about to touch the shoulder of this bandit and cut off his hand, suddenly the elder's spear appeared and blocked the blow. The warrior did not understand what had just happened and where this old man came from here, and most importantly, he did not understand why this old man blocked his attack. The bandit heard the voice of an elder who said that using a blade for revenge as an excuse is disgusting and causes pain before killing is an immoral act. Lu said that with all this, they do not dare to call themselves warriors of the orthodox sex, but in fact they are only brutal killers. He hid the bandit behind his back and looked menacingly at these warriors. He said that the grandfather, who turned out to be the neighbor of these brats, was obliged to protect them from monsters. The wars asked this old man who he was and he answered them that he was just a grandfather who happened to be the neighbor of these weaklings and was obliged to protect them. The warrior ordered this old man not to interfere in his own business and to retreat before it was too late. Lu replied that it would be very strange if he did not interfere in this conflict now and simply closed his eyes to the current problem. He turned his head back and saw a wounded bandit. He said that the problems of these bandits had nothing to do with him and he should absolutely not care about them. He remembered how the bandits rejoiced at their triumph over the blue wolf and said that there are times when neighbors should help each other. He remembered the moment when he came to his home and saw many dead members of his family, and if someone had helped his family evacuate that day, this might not have happened. He looked at these armed warriors. I thought that these scum are members of the Wudang sect, one of the key factions in the Murima alliance which is supposed to be behind the murder of his family. He raised his spear up and said that these wars are not aware of everything that is happening here and they can only guess what this grandfather had to go through. He told them that they don't even realize how hard he has to restrain himself now in order not to kill them right here and now. They began to communicate with each other using telepathic abilities and the younger brother said that this is the old man who is now wanted. They realized that this was exactly the old man because they saw his unusual spear and the child who was on his back. The brothers said that this is a great opportunity to express themselves since this opponent is already an old man who has been retired for a long time and defeating him will be as easy as shelling pears, but you need to make sure that the child does not suffer because Murima asked the alliance to return her alive. Lu lowered his spear down and stabbed it into the ground. He said that these two warriors were still young he could give them a chance to stay alive. But the soldiers decided not to listen to him and thought that he was just a crazy old man. They decided to attack him at the very moment when they saw that he lowered his spear and thought that this was the perfect moment to attack him. The warrior saw that this old man had a lot of open places to attack him. But suddenly he felt that someone touched his cheek with their fingers or pulled him to the side. Lu hooked his fingers around this guy's latch and began to spin around his body. The elder brother watched as this old man turned his little brother's head and it all came to the point that his head was broken. The younger brother at that moment did not understand what was happening, he felt his neck crunch loudly several times and after that his head was on his back. He was still alive but slowly losing knowledge and falling down. Lu said that these guys still had a chance to escape and refuse to fight, but they made their own choice and so he pierced their bodies with his spear. Lu said that at that moment they crossed the forbidden line and now a war would begin between the Wudang and Black Blade clans. Lu understood that this was a stupid, strong circle together and it would continue more and more and it was unlikely that it could ever be stopped. The elder understood that man is an animal that can never free himself from the desire for revenge, and the old man will also never be able to suppress this desire in himself. He said that he will never stop until he finishes taking revenge for his family and until he kills all the people who committed this evil. When they approached the gate of the bandits' camp, suddenly one of the bandits shouted that the elder was coming with Sangu. 
the bandits began to shout in surprise that they now had the corpses of Taoists on their shoulders. Sangu said that everything was exactly like that and the elder dealt with these rats using only one blow of his spear. A very loud naked scream began in the camp, the bandits were happy because their friend was alive and the elder was able to kill their opponents, but the old man asked them to stop making noise because he was not going to help these bandits. Lu knew that in the Wu Dan sect there were many true martial artists, and during those days that he traveled around the world, he understood this well. He knew that next time, instead of beginners, I would send stronger warriors here, and perhaps they would be real masters. And when this moment comes and martial arts masters come to these mountains to take revenge, an inevitable disaster awaits them. Pang Ho bowed to the elder and greeted him after that. He thanked the elder for helping them. Lu asked the leader of the bandits why he was so calm and was he able to find out something about the strength of these warriors. Pang replied that there were only eight warriors and among them there were three first-generation disciples and two of them had just been killed. Lu said that if these are first-generation disciples, then they must be first-class masters who have already wielded a sword and the only person who can resist them is someone like Pang Ho because he studied martial arts. Pang Ho said that they have no special strategy to resist these warriors and all they can do is use the barricade as a shield and hold out as long as they can. Lu said that it doesn't matter how thick and high their barricade is, because it is useless, the first generation disciples of the Wudang sect will cross. The elder explained that these warriors know how to use a sword and can easily cut a wooden fence and with so many people they will not be able to hit them with arrows. He understood that, as in the case of the blue wolf, they needed to lure these conifers inside, surround them and destroy them since the bandits once served the government forces, they must know how to ambush. Pang Ho said that he was confident that he could set up an ambush, but he was afraid that the first generation disciples might sense their energy. Lu said that this is precisely why he brought two corpses of these warriors here so that with their energy they would distract the attention of the first generation students. He started scratching his beard and said that all they need to do is kill a few idiots before they can execute the Wudang sect sword array. Night had begun and the forest was very dark and quiet, but everyone understood that this was the calm before the storm. The warriors from the sect realized that their brothers whom they sent on this mission did not return and decided to personally come here to kill these guys. They moved very quickly and quietly through the forest using their ability to move unnoticed. The leader of their sect suddenly raised his hand up and made this gesture to the rest of the fighters. The sect wars saw their leader's gesture and immediately stopped. They hid behind the bushes and tried to be invisible like a shadow in the dark. Their leader narrowed his eyes and carefully began to examine the fortress they now needed to invade. He noticed that it was too quiet at their base and most likely they had already fled from here. But they needed to check this. After all, they came to exterminate these beetles. One of the students said that he knew that this is exactly what would happen and these weaklings would get scared and run away, the second guy replied that the two brothers whom they sent here have not returned yet and most likely they can now pursue the bandits. The leader of the Wudang sect's punitive forces, first-generation disciple Qin Jin, asked his junior warriors to be quiet and not make noise. Hyun saw with the help of her unique vision that there were archers behind the walls of this camp and they were now sitting in ambush behind their barricades and waiting for the right moment to attack. She assumed that there were now more than a hundred bandits inside this camp and did not understand whether they would be able to cope with all these robbers. This girl's name was Hyun Hee and she was a second generation disciple of the Wudang sect. Qin Hua said that there was no point in worrying because they could destroy them with one blow and it would be an easy battle. Qin Wu said that this girl was the most talented among the second generation students and therefore offered her these first and then he could look at her skills. She obediently stood up and began to walk forward. She said that she understood why the elder brothers asked her to go first. Hyun He was very worried at that moment and tried to look closely to see where the other opponents were. Suddenly she said that there were still opponents there whom she could only notice now. But the guys didn't understand who exactly she was talking about. Hyun He asked her brothers to look at the entrance to this camp and then not seeing the same thing that she sees. On the way to this camp there was a man with long hair, his face was not visible next to him. Two Thai disciples of the Wudong clan were sitting. They were shocked and they saw that the younger students were caught by ordinary bandits and used as bait. 
He raised his sword and shouted loudly that the henchmen of the Wudang sect should carefully watch how their brothers were being killed and retreat if they did not want to end their lives in the same way. He cut off the head of one of the brothers and threw it towards these warriors. The head very quickly began to fly towards them and in flight it left a trail of blood behind it. The head fell to the ground and slowly began to bounce off the ground and roll towards the warriors who were now hiding in the bushes in the forest. The severed head fell right near the feet of one of these warriors and stopped in this very place. The student was very scared and began to scream loudly that their younger brother Hyun son had just been brutally killed and decapitated. Hyun he said that this whole situation looks very strange and assumed that both of them should already be dead, but the guy who stood in front of her said that the second brother is still alive. They saw him sitting tied up near the gate and assumed that these bandits poisoned him so that he could not use his power. The elder swung her sword again and was about to cut off the head of the second brother, he said that it was very noisy here and he didn't like it. One of the students suddenly made a sharp jerk and quickly moved from the forest to the gates of this camp, he shouted that he hated these damned bandits. The guy tried to save the younger student and shouted that he would not allow him to be beheaded. Lu at this moment had almost touched this guy's neck with his sword. Lu decided to use his sword to cut off a bunch of hair from this guy's head. The warrior realized that he was in a hurry when he decided to jump here because he felt a sharp blade of a blade near his neck. Lu struck this warrior and threw him into the depths of the camp, but the warrior still managed to block this blow and survived. He flew back and did not understand what had just happened and where did this man get such incredible strength. The guy in flight thought that all this was impossible because the trajectory of the sword of this man who had just hit him with all his strength changed in an instant. Lu walked up to his spear and with the help of his foot he threw his spear up in order to use it now as a weapon. He caught the spear with his right hand and said that he was surprised that this guy was able to block his blow and realized that this guy was a first generation student. It was yours who was able to land on the ground and after that he immediately decided to rush into battle again, he was very surprised that this old bandit was capable of such a strong blow and therefore, although he could kill him with one blow in response. Lu opened his mouth and waited for his beat to get as close to him as possible in order to use his next combat technique. The elder began to scream very loudly and with the help of his scream was able to throw his enemy back again. He raised his spear up and said that now that they had seen his internal chi energy, the strongest of these wars would make its move. He held the spear in his hands and tried to fill it with fiery energy. Lu understood that time could not be wasted just like that and he needed to gain as much energy as possible before the duel began. The warrior was surprised because he had never seen such strong energy before, like me, and now he understood that he himself had to use all his strength to block these blows. Lu decided to attack this warrior in his open area and pierce right through his body. The warrior at that moment tried to block the blows of this spear with his sword, but he moved too slowly and did not expect that anyone would be able to break through his block. He looked down and saw that a large hole had now appeared in his body. Lu was able to pierce the body of this warrior using his fire attack and now the fire beam began to fly further. This fire beam is called the Lu family spear technique and it was the third move. The third move is usually called the flying spear of execution. At that moment, a very strong explosion occurred behind this guy and there was a large through hole in his body. The blast wave was so strong that it pushed the elder back and it was difficult for him to stand on his feet after such an explosion. He flew back and thought that he managed to use this technique correctly. But he understood that now he had managed to cope with only one enemy and most likely the next enemies were already starting to approach him. He was able to stop and stand with his feet on the ground in order to stop flying. Now the strongest martial arts expert among all these warriors decided to personally fight the elder and made a swift dash to meet him. He was a master who professionally wielded the ball and could spin it in his hands while flying. He rotated around his body and gained speed creating their blade using his sword. He felt the soft but strong fighting spirit and first-class martial art that this sword-wielding warrior exuded. He blocked the blow of this sword using his spear and thought that despite the fact that his internal energy is not comparable to his, but the opponent's strength is truly incredible and the first-generation disciple is very strong. Lu managed to block this guy's blow, but still he could not stay on his feet because the force of the blow was incredibly strong and he began to fly backwards. He did not know that the bound scientist who was sitting near the gate was already a corpse and therefore ordered him to quickly come to his senses and run away from here. At that moment, a sharp blade pierced his body from the back. 
he turned his head back and realized that the guy who had just killed him was not his student. He knew that after such a severe wound he only had a short time to live and so he wanted to say something before he died. He began to accuse these bandits of being damned demon killers and they all needed to be destroyed. Lu did not want to listen to the dying screams of this idiot and therefore pierced his body with his spear in order to finish him off. The rest of the disciples were very scared when they saw that the two strongest warriors from their sect had just been killed by these bandits. Lu suggested that these brats think carefully before going into battle and think carefully about their afterlife. After all, they will lose and very quickly. Elder Lu, together with Pang Ho, began to very quickly beat their leader and mutilate his body so that the rest of the students would get scared and decide to run away from here once and for all. From the guy watched this whole situation from the side and thought that two first-generation students of the Wudang sect were killed by simple bandits. He looked at the corpses of his brothers and realized that these monsters dared to resort to dirty tricks and they would never be able to forgive them. The disciples could not be in the country and do nothing, so I did not immediately make a breakthrough and wanted to fight these bandits and take revenge on them. The gang leader told the elder that they must retreat immediately before it is too late. The elder listened to his friend's advice and immediately jumped back with him and they entered the territory of the bandits' camp. The guy shouted very loudly that they would now destroy these damned insects and not allow them to just escape. But at that moment he took a step forward in order to catch up with the enemy, you felt that the earth began to collapse under his feet. He didn't understand what was happening and slowly began to fall down. And at that moment the rest of the participants followed in his footsteps and did not understand what was happening. The leader of the bandits shouted that they once caught a mystical beast using this pit and now they will catch these stupid students and drive them into the same trap. The Taoists realized that if they now fall into this pit, then it will be the end for them and they began to jump in different directions in order not to fall into the trap. When they found themselves inside the bandits' camp, an ambush awaited them and the archers were already pulling the bowstring to take a shot at them. The guy shouted that there were only four of them. The enemy was several times larger and they wouldn't be able to easily deal with them. At that moment, his body was pierced by an arrow and he felt very strong pain, he did not even have time to notice this arrow and dodge it. The senior student returned his head and saw that his partner had just been killed with an arrow and he did not have time to control it and protect him. He raised his head up and saw that the archers had fired a lot of arrows and now a rain of these arrows was heading towards them. The head student ordered the rest of his group to hide behind him so that he could use the ball to protect them from these arrows. Suddenly he felt very strong pain and saw that a spear blade was sticking out of his chest, he didn't even have time to understand at what moment his body was pierced. The elder decided to take advantage of any opportune moment to destroy another enemy and with the help of his spear he became a senior student. The bandit leader told his soldiers to go on the attack and destroy these stupid Taoists. A fierce battle began in the bandit camp and the blood of the Taoists scattered in different directions. One guy was still able to survive and tried to run into this camp before he was killed. He shouted that they just need to wait and he will definitely make them all pay for today. The leader ordered to catch this idiot because they cannot allow him to return to the sect and tell about what happened here. A red flash flew near his face at that moment and he didn't even understand what happened. A fiery red flash pierced the body of the fleeing enemy and he screamed very loudly and suffered from pain. The shot of the fire spear was incredibly strong and after it pierced the enemy's body, this shot hit the stone and the ground in that place exploded. The elder said that if this guy wants to do it, he can only do it in the afterlife. The leader of the bandits asked what happened to the two guys who fell into the hole. The thug reported that one guy died from arrows that pierced his body, but the second girl is still alive, despite the fact that she was very seriously injured. The leader said that at first glance, she seemed to be a second generation disciple, and she was blocking the arrows with sword chi energy. Bruiser asked the gentleman what should they do with this girl now. The leader said that they have no other options and they must send her to the afterlife because she will bring a lot of problems if she remains alive. The archer pulled the bowstring and said that if this girl wants to be offended by someone, then she should be offended by her sect. She closed her eyes and prepared for the fact that she was now going to die and it was unlikely that she would somehow be able to stay alive. The elder approached this young archer and asked him to stop and not make hasty decisions. The old man said that they would not let this girl live for now, and only in this case would the black mountain blade be able to progress normally. The elder poured tea into his cup and waited for the tea to brew. The thug said that the Wudang sect just won't leave them alone and won't stop, 
and they still have nowhere to go, so they can't just stay here and continue to fight to the death. The elders replied that there is no need to be arrogant just because they once won this sect. As the elder drank tea from a cup and said that compared to the elite sect masters, the scoundrels they had just fought were nothing more than ordinary weak disciples. The leader asked what should they do in such a situation. The elder put the cup on the table and said that he heard that several years ago a ring tournament was held among promising talents on Mount Hua. He said that on that day, a disciple of the Wudang sect accidentally killed a disciple of Mount Hua and because of this, their relationship has not been good since then. The leader of a gang of bandits said that he heard this story. The elder said that this mountain was not far from this place and ordered the bandits to collect the clothes of the dead disciples and scatter them near Mount Hua. The leader of the bandits said that this is a brilliant plan and then the sect will have the impression that Hua is on the way here. The elders said that they do not take into account this nonsense, they will have to find a way to survive by creating confusion to stall for time. The leader said that the elder, as always, came up with a brilliant plan thanks to which they could survive. The elder told this brat not to admire this idea and the elder doesn't want anything to do with it at all, he's just offering them options. Granddaughter Sol saw her grandfather and greeted him very joyfully after he had left home for some time. The grandfather smiled when he saw his granddaughter and realized that she was now running towards him to hug him. Sol called the grandfather of the villains, but she did not pronounce some letters. Grandfather said that in my opinion he was a villain but this was so that justice would prevail and as long as the granddaughter was safe that's enough. He looked at her happy, joyful face and thought that as long as he could educate and grandfather would always be ready for anything. In the mountains the loud cries of soldiers could be heard saying the same phrases in chorus. The warriors trained at the training ground and practiced new strikes from the very morning. The elder approached the leader of the bandits and said that his guys had been training very hard since the morning. The leader replied that they never know when those idiots of the Wudang sect will attack again so they must constantly train. The elder said that the martial arts that the military uses are only suitable for the battlefield in Murim, these strikes do not work. The leader asked if the elder could teach them new fighting techniques. The elder said that he doesn't have much free time and energy to train these bandits. The elder said that he had prepared a new plan and for this they need to go to the prison where the captive disciple of the Wudang sect is located. The elder looked at this girl and said that now anyone who sees her will think that she is an ordinary ghost. She immediately ran to the iron bars and grabbed them with her hands, she ordered the old bandit to let go immediately or she will make him regret it. He scratched his beard and after that said that he would regret it even more if he let her go and after that asked if she wouldn't return from his Yudin sector after he let her go. The girl called the old man a real killer. He said that she and her friends came here to kill them and asked her which of them was the real killer. He said that Murim is exactly such a place, a world where force is the law for everyone and she had to prepare for death when she came here. The elder said that when he saw her, he remembered his daughter-in-law, despite her face, you would think that this girl does not eat well. She told him that she was absolutely not interested in talking about these topics and that it was a waste of time. The elder ordered his boys to bring the food they had prepared here. The guys brought several plates of very tasty food with a lot of meat seasoned with incredibly tasty spices. When she saw the food, she thought that she was not interested in anything other than this food, she wanted to get a plate of delicious chicken as soon as possible. Saliva was dripping from the yorta and she could not think about anything other than food. At that moment she realized that the tariff was using this food as bait and she had to stop so as not to fall into the trap. She said that if these dirty bandits think that they can break her pride with ordinary food, then I'm not mistaken. Trisha's son is the key to the lock and screwed it several times, he said that he doesn't force this girl to eat this delicious food. He said that she could do whatever she wanted and refuse this food, but he warned her that he would remove this plate in 30 minutes and for now she had time to think. He bit his nails and thought that this food had an incredibly delicious smell. Sol saw a very tasty chicken lying next to her and began to pull her grandfather's pant leg so that he would also look at this food. Grandfather came to his granddaughter does she also want to eat this chicken and asked when did she get hungry. The grandfather told his granddaughter that this is not her food and this is food for the girl who is now in the cell, but he doesn't know what to do with this food because his granddaughter is very hungry. The girl who had been sitting in the cell all this time asked the little girl to eat this food and stop torturing her. Sol decided not to waste time and immediately ran to the plate with very tasty food. She was still very small. 
But despite this, she had a very good appetite and she immediately began to bite off large pieces of meat and wash it down with delicious broth. The old man said that thanks to the fact that this girl in the cell is not hungry, his granddaughter can eat as much as she wants and he reminded that he will remove this food in seven minutes. She watched this little girl very quickly eat a large amount of food that she could eat herself. Salt was an insatiable child and she could eat a large portion of meat and not even notice that all the food was gone. She watched her food run out faster and faster every minute. Salt bit off large pieces of meat and finished the second portion of fried pork. She couldn't look at it anymore because I live at this moment in the night muttering very loudly and she was tired of swallowing the saliva that formed in her mouth. She started screaming very loudly and ordered this girl to immediately move away from her piece of meat and remove her dirty hands from this delicious food. Sol got scared when she saw this girl screaming loudly at her and jumped to the side. The elder took his granddaughter in his arms and began to calm her down because she was very scared, after that he told the girl not to rush when eating this food because she might get a stomach ache. She very quickly finished the plate of noodles and thought that this food was incredibly tasty. The elder saw the empty plate scattered and said that if this girl had finished her food, then she should follow him and go outside to get some fresh air. The weather was good outside and evening had already come, and trees with green leaves adorned nature more than ever. She went outside and thought that after being locked up for ten days, she finally felt like she could live like a normal person. The elder brought the girl to a place they call baths and said that he would give this girl thirty minutes to bathe. They went inside and she saw that there was a large bathroom in this place and most likely it was prepared for her. The elder said that the girl probably felt uncomfortable since she couldn't wash herself properly and he didn't want to force her. Therefore, if she doesn't want to take a bath, she can refuse. But her answer was obvious, she immediately closed the door and went to the bathroom, but the elder just saw the door slam in his face. She immediately undressed and lay down in a warm bath to finally feel relaxed and clean. She enjoyed the hot water and these pleasant sensations and said that she had a feeling that she was not in a den of bandits, but in heaven or on some kind of vacation. It was very calm in the mountains. The elder saw the girl come out of the bathhouse in new clothes and said that she became a completely different person after taking a bath. She said that she looked bad only because she was locked up all this time. But in fact, she is a very neat person and always takes care of herself. The elder said that this mountain looks very beautiful at sunset and it is a great path for a walk. She looked at everything that was around her and suddenly saw wild flowers blooming here. It was very beautiful. The elder said that they had been walking in nature for long enough and now it was time for her to go back. In a surprised and frightened voice, she asked where exactly should she return. She again saw a dark room with iron others and realized that they did not want to return her back to this terrible place. The elder said that she needed to return to her previous place and asked her to change into her old dirty clothes. She screamed that they were real monsters and they treated her terribly and it would be better if they didn't show her such a good day and left her alone. The elder said that she was their captive and they themselves choose the method of torture for their captives. She fell to her knees and said that she had been wrong all along. The elder got it done. What is she talking about? He said the girl didn't do anything wrong. She shouted that it would be better if they killed her on the spot instead of returning her to this dirty cell again. The elder said that if this sweet girl doesn't like being in a dirty cell, then she can enjoy every day just like today. But for this he needed to get something equivalent to freedom and he asked, is the girl ready to make such a sacrifice in order to live in comfort? He stood with his bandits and talked about how he could give her what she wanted. She asked what exactly they wanted to get from her. Suddenly she saw that the elder very quickly made a jerk in the wrong direction. The elder made several blows with his fingers on different points on this girl's back. She lost consciousness after being hit with her fingers on these points and fell asleep. The elder said that she would very soon find out exactly what he meant and what they wanted from her, but for now it was better for her to rest. In the cave in which the girl was hidden it was very cold and damp and drops were constantly dripping down from the ceiling. She was lying on the floor and looking at the ceiling, she had just woken up and at that moment she realized that she was again in this dirty place. She kept thinking about the food she could have if she agreed to their conditions. She wanted to get out of here. She didn't like being in this nasty place and the drops that fell from the ceiling landed on her face. She remembered how the elder told her that she could enjoy every day just like today if she made the right choices, but it would only be fair if she gave them an equivalent replacement for her freedom. 
she didn't know what was the right thing to do and these thoughts constantly tormented her head. Suddenly, an elder appeared in the cave, he stood near her grate and asked what decision she was able to make during the night. She turned away so as not to look at him or talk to him. The elder said that he is leaving now and does not know when he will return again. Therefore, if she has made a decision, then it is better to say it right now. She closed her eyes and thought that if she refuses, I will not keep her in this prison until she dies. But if she still agrees to gain freedom, then she will never be able to return to the sect because she will be severely punished for this act. She didn't know what to do correctly in this situation and these thoughts constantly tormented her head. The elder heard the girl tell him that she had made a decision and he looked carefully to her to hear her answer. She replied that she would do whatever they asked and just not be in this place anymore. He said that she made the right decisions and can get out of this prison right now. Warriors from this gang stood on the street and they were all without outerwear and were waiting for orders from their new teacher. She slowly walked towards these guys. The girl went outside and saw that in front of her stood a large number of fighters who were waiting to train and learn new martial arts. When she stopped opposite these fighters, she looked carefully into their eyes and began to understand what was happening here. The girl said that she expected that the elder's request would be that she teach them martial arts. She asked why did the elder want to ask her for this particular favor. He replied that the swordsmanship of the long-known Wudang sect in which each movement costs 10,000 tails of gold. The elder said that he watched this girl quite a bit, but for a second-generation disciple, her martial arts skills are simply incredible and it would be very useful for these children if she taught them some fencing techniques from the Wudang sect. He said that if this fact becomes known, then all the ladies will not let this girl go alive. She replied that she understood this perfectly well. Once, when she was still very little, everyone brought her in. At that moment, many teachers were against this sect teaching girls. They did not allow her to train and took this girl to bring tea and do the work that the servants do, but the girl constantly trained and repeated the techniques that she saw from other students. Hyun he grew up very quickly and was mainly used as a servant for the master, but she still continued to train. She said that it would be better to be excommunicated from the sect than to sit locked up here and die a terrible death. The leader of the bandits said that from now on they will be trained by a new instructor, this girl's name is Hyun He. The soldiers greeted the girl and said that they were very pleased to see the new instructor. The leader of the bandits gave the new instructor her sword and asked her to give her recommendations for his warriors. Hyun He looked at this bandit leader and thought that he is stronger than her in martial arts and she cannot believe that he bows his head in front of her like that and gives her the signature sword of this gang. She pulled the sword out of its sheath and said that in this case she wants to demonstrate her abilities to this gang so that they understand who will be their instructor. Hyun He stood in a fighting position and said that they need to watch carefully, because now she will demonstrate to them the art of handling the ball of the Wudang sect. Her legs moved very quickly in space and she moved quickly. Hyun He made a circular motion around herself and her sword was like a whirlwind because it was spinning in a circle very quickly. She swung her sword and turned her head back to demonstrate the blow. Her movements were very light and graceful, but nevertheless, each of her strikes caused a huge amount of damage to the enemy. She wielded her sword so professionally it was as if the sword was part of her body. Hyun He extended her hand forward and took a fighting stance that completes the fighting combination. The bandits carefully watched her every move and when the new instructor stopped, they continued to look at her with delight. Hyun He looked at the joyful faces of these bandits and saw that they did not admire her martial art. They shouted that their new instructor was great and it made her happy. She pretended as if she didn't pay attention to their joyful cries and said that this technique is called the Sword of Fury technique even though this is the basic sword technique of the strike sect, if they lay a solid foundation and master it perfectly, then no technique can defeat them first class sword. The elders saw that the girls were starting to like teaching these guys and the bandits were also delighted with the new instructor. He realized that he did the right thing when he decided to let this girl live and now she is probably happier than she was before. Hyun He showed new techniques to her students and constantly tried to correct their strikes and explain to them what they were doing correctly and what their mistakes were. Evening came and it was already setting over the horizon, in the valley loud screams could be heard, the bandits still continued to train. After this day several days passed and night came. They made a small house for Hyun He so that she could live separately from everyone else. Hyun He sat on the bed and thought that she taught them all the movements and principles of the Sword of Fury technique and now they should be able to cultivate it on their own. 
she heard a man knock on her door and say that he had brought food for the instructor. The girl allowed him to come in and put food on the table. She saw that they had brought her very tasty meat and a plate of dumplings. When she ate this food but thought that these bandits have excellent talent in cooking and thanks to them she manages to eat well and have a good rest. She used to be the best student among the second generation of the Dana sect and she also knew all the martial arts except the first class martial art. But the people and sects in the house always treated her with disdain. Hyun he lay down on the bed, thinking that this was the first time she had received such good service, and now she began to understand what it was like to be a nobleman of the imperial palace. She now realized that she felt happy and suddenly her room became very light and she did not understand where this light came from. Hyun he went to the door to see what was happening on the street and where this light came from. She looked through the door crack and saw that it was very light outside. She looked through the crack and realized that there was not a single guard near her. But earlier at night she had multi-level surveillance and guards. She went outside and realized that now when she thinks about it, she doesn't feel any energy near her house. Hyun he made a quick dash and left her home, she went deep into the forest and thought that she had a good chance. She ran through the forest and tried to get to the fence as quickly as possible. When she approached the fence, you realized that all I had left to do was just climb over this barricade and leave this place. Hyun he took a few steps along the surface of this barricade and climbed up. She jumped up and realized that she had succeeded in doing it. And she escaped from the bandit camp. Hyun he landed on the ground and stopped, she understood that now that she had left the territory she could continue on her journey. But when Hen raised her head, she saw something very strange and realized that my plan was half-baked. The elder stood in front of her and looked at her with such a look as if he knew in advance that she would want to escape. She pushed off the ground with her feet, jumped back and then grabbed her sword with her hand. The elder said that he tried very hard when he chose a set of clothes for her and now it is not clear to him why she decided to stain these clothes. Hyun he said that she doesn't understand what the elders mean. He said that since she had kept her promise, she could just walk out the front door with confidence. She was very surprised when she heard the elder's words and did not understand why he did not try to stop her. The elder said that he is not keeping her here, but he wants to ask where she is going to go. He said that she shouldn't go back to everyone because she'll get in trouble if she goes back there. He asked her to rest until the morning and then leave, and he said that he had no right to forbid her to return to the sect, but he was just worried about her. The elder turned around and said that he would talk to the leader of the bandit so that they would allocate money for the road and food for her before she left. She thought that she really had no time to go. If it became known that she trained the robbers in the swordsmanship of the Wudang sect, then she would be kicked out of the sect, but that would be the least of her problems. She sheathed her sword and decided to take a deep breath in and out in order to calm down and make the right decision. Hyun he woke up early in the morning in her house and was doing something all morning. She saw that a large bag with various things had been placed near her door in the morning. Hyun he opened the bag and saw that inside there were gold coins and various coins. She realized that the elder had fulfilled his promise. Pang Ho, along with his bandits, went up to the instructor and said that he had been told that Hyun he was going to leave. She heard the voice of the leader of the bandits and thought that they would now try to hold her so that she would not leave, she told them that she was not leaving yet. Pang Ho said that they couldn't keep her even though their relationship started off in the worst possible way. He said he hoped she would have positive memories of her time here. She said that she was not going to leave yet, but Pang Ho did not hear her words and informed his bandits that their instructor was leaving and they needed to say goodbye to her properly. She understood that for now she didn't want to leave here, but these bandits were so kind that they actually decided to trick her in a good way. She walked slowly towards the exit from the bandits camp and saw the horses escorting me and waving their hands after. They wished her luck and told her to be careful going down the mountain. Hyun he stopped and said that in fact they would not be able to realize the full power of the Sword of Fury technique without the accompanying footwork technique of the Wudang sect. Pang Ho immediately approached the girl and asked her to repeat again what she had just said. Hyun he said in a quiet voice that they would not be able to fully unleash the power of the Fury Sword technique, they would need to learn how to use their feet. Pang Ho said that he didn't hear her well and asked her to repeat the same thing again only louder. Hyun he shouted very loudly that she was staying here with them and would teach them how to work with their feet as it was taught at the Wudang school. There was an awkward pause between them and they stood silently for several seconds and looked at each other. 
Pang Ho bowed to this girl and said that he was very touched by her attention and the fact that she agreed to teach them. The leader of the bandits asked the lady if she would not mind teaching his children new combat techniques and guiding them. She replied that if they asked her then she wouldn't mind. All this time, the elder was observing this situation from the side and watched as the bandit leader ordered his subjects to take proper care of the instructor. He turned his head towards the elder and smiled slyly because he knew that their plan had worked. The elder nodded his head and made it clear to the leader of the bandits that they did everything right. Hang Ho asked her instructor to go with him and the girl said that she would stay here to help them but not for long. The elder looked at how these two get along very well with each other and thought that he did everything right when he decided to help this girl and left her in the bandit camp. Sol repeated the words after her grandfather and constantly said that these two get along well and these two get along well with each other. Grandfather said that this little bastard doesn't understand anything, but in any case, so far everything is going according to their plans. Six months had already passed since that moment and the elder was in his house and felt something very strange. He meditated and thought that despite the fact that several disciples went missing, the Wudang sect did not take any action during this time. He wanted to know if this meant that his plan to make the Hua Mountain sect and the Wudang sect fight each other had worked or if something serious had happened that meant they couldn't worry about the common bandits. He came to the conclusion that there is no way to find out the reason and right now the most important thing for him is his granddaughter. Sol sat near the wall with a dissatisfied face and said that she was hungry. Grandfather said that he prepared a parking lot for little Sol and if she opens her mouth she will eat this delicious carrot. He put the spoon on the table and said that if the granddaughter doesn't want to eat carrot porridge then she doesn't have to eat it. He took the food and said that she doesn't even know how valuable food is to them now. Sol started crying because her grandfather was upset because she didn't want to eat carrot porridge. He entered the room again and said that he had prepared porridge and meat for his beloved granddaughter. He put in a spoonful of this porridge and his granddaughter happily ate this delicious food. He understood that he had to use a trick in order to force his granddaughter to eat and instead of meat, he put mushrooms in the porridge, but depending on how it justifies it depends on whether he will eat this porridge or not. He meditated while sitting on the street and thought that many days had already passed, yet now is not the time to relax and think that everything is in the past. He meditated every day and wanted to collect the internal qi energy for 180 years to renew his body as soon as possible. He understood that he still had headaches from time to time, there was a limit to which he could suppress this tumor with the help of poison. He said that he had to renew his body as quickly as possible in order to take revenge on the people who killed his family. But the most important goal was to protect my beloved granddaughter before she grew up. He understood that it was very important for him to train his internal chi energy and he could not neglect his martial arts training. He took his spear and realized that now is the time to practice. Because his granddaughter is still too young and too early to wield a spear, but he should gradually introduce her to it. He asked her to carefully watch how grandfather trains. The old man stood in a fighting stance and firmly leaned his feet on the ground. He said that today they will teach her techniques for wielding a spear. The elder said that among other things, the wind has the most flexible characteristics, so nothing can disturb the nature of the wind, the root of their Lu family spear technique lies in the principle of wind. The elder said that the wind that covers the whole world is flexible and soft and can be controlled. Lu said that when this force gathers in one place, it has enough destructive power to pierce even rocks. Sol carefully watched as her grandfather trained beautifully and showed her different blows using a spear. Lu thought there that their family's spear fighting technique was a powerful art like me that was used to fight for the title of the strongest man in the world. He thought later that when his power was at its peak, the one who stood in the center was a legendary expert and their ancestors were the spear demon. Even the Liang family's bizarre and powerful spear art was nothing compared to his strength, and he dominated the entire world thanks to the power of the destroying wind spear. After the secret manual left by the spear demon's ancestor was lost, their Lu family lost the powers they once possessed. He picked up this copy and said that all that was left was the divine fire dragon spear, if only they could not find the manual that the spear demon left then they would have incredible power. Sol went up to her grandfather and took his pant leg with her hand. He asked this little rascal if she understood what he had just told her. She stretched out her hands to this spear and asked grandfather to give it to her to touch. He said that this spear is still too big for her and it is unlikely that she will be able to hold it in her hands. She still pulled her hands towards this spear. 
Lu said that if she wants, she can try to hold him. He told his granddaughter that it would be very difficult for her to hold this spear in her hands because her hands were still very small. Sol started screaming and crying and after that she said that grandpa was bad, but he didn't understand what bad he had done. Lu turned his head back and saw that there was a bamboo stick lying in his garden. He took this stick in his hands and said that he had found something for his granddaughter and this weapon would be the right size for her. She said that this stick also belongs to Sol. The girl picked up a green bamboo stick and took a fighting stance, trying to repeat the movement that her grandfather did. Lu saw how his granddaughter masterfully repeated his movement and said that she would turn out to be real professionals, but I asked him to be careful and not fall when she repeated after her grandfather. He understood the spear upward and his granddaughter repeated this movement after him and then said that he needed to lower his fighting stance and direct the flow to the blade of the spear. Lu thought that the first moves of their family's spear fighting technique were performing an extreme flash that was performed using basic footwork. After using this as a high-speed art like me that leaves no opportunity for the enemy to dodge, he asked his granddaughter if she could follow his movements. He thought that she should at least imitate his movement. But when he looked at what she was doing now he was very surprised. Salt waved the bamboo stick in different directions and tried to beat the air. Lu started laughing and said that his granddaughter was trying to show how cute she was when she waved a stick and tried to imitate her grandfather. But he decided to take a closer look at her movements and realized that she was waving a stick in a certain order. He saw that her blows with a bamboo spear repeated the principle of the technique as I did their family and the flow was exactly the same as he showed her. What she just did with the bamboo spear was impossible because she simply watched her grandfather through his training and was able to repeat the entire combination of attacks exactly. He remembered that his granddaughter possesses one of the attributes of the immortal concentration of the sound body and at this rate they will not be able to teach her this skill very quickly. Lu thought there that thanks to her granddaughter, he would be able to resurrect the demon spear. He placed his spear on the ground and said that from now on he would try his best to teach her all the techniques he knew. But it was after these words that his back began to hurt very badly and he felt that it was very difficult for him to move. Lu bent over and massaged his back. He said that he would better start training with his granddaughter from tomorrow, but she repeated all his movements after him. He saw that she was copying him and began to laugh and said that she was not yet old enough to suffer from pain in her body and that was very good. A man touched with his foot a stretched rope with jingling bells. The sound from this rope was heard throughout the forest and the old man realized that some stranger had appeared on their territory. He clearly heard these sounds of a bell and from it that someone was approaching here. A man armed with a large sword moved towards the house of Lu and his granddaughter. He did not understand what kind of people could dare to come here without an invitation and be armed. Lu saw three black silhouettes coming out of the forest at that moment and heading towards his house. He was very wary because he didn't like it when uninvited guests came to him and according to him that it could always get by with some kind of conflict. In front of him was a girl accompanied by two bandits, this girl said that she was finally able to find her grandfather and his granddaughter. Lu was very surprised when he saw these guys at home and was even confused, I don't know what to answer them. Lu said that they had not seen each other for a long time and he was surprised to see her in such an outfit. Hyun he ordered the big man to bring gifts here that were not brought for the girl and the big man said that he would immediately carry out the order of the general manager. Lu asked since when did she become the general manager? He said that he could not even think that the second generation disciple of the Wudang sect could become the general manager of a gangster group. Hyun he said that they brought some wild boar meat for the elder that they caught yesterday and they added rabbit meat to it. Salt immediately ran to this bag when she heard the word meat. Hyun he said that this bag is very heavy and she can carry it into the house herself. Salt didn't want to listen to anyone and so she immediately took the bag of meat and took it into the house so as not to share it with anyone. Lu asked her to stop being formal and told her to come straight to the point. He said that he didn't think that not everyone came here just to give them food. Hyun he said that the elder apparently did not hear the latest news that happened in the valley. Lu suggested that the warriors from the Wudang section had finally made their move and decided to attack the valley, but she told him that was not the case. Hyun he said that they don't have time to worry about it now because they have completely different things to do. She said that something very grandiose is happening now and in connection with these events everyone forgot about the bandits. Hyun he said that the events that are happening now are so grandiose that they can turn Jianghu upside down. 
The elder asked what exactly does she mean when she says that something very grandiose will happen and it will turn Jiang Hu upside down. He asked her to explain all this and preferably as soon as possible. She asked the elder if he knew the Empress of Swords. He replied that of course he knows, because a martial artist may not know who the current emperor is now, but any master should know the greatest martial artist in the world. She said that there are rumors that she will soon perform a ritual of returning to a virtuous life in Bayan County, not far from here. He asked, is it all that important? She replied that this is all incredibly important because it is a ritual of the Sword Empress. She said that this is a ritual of returning to a virtuous life and a formal retirement ceremony during which martial artists leave Jianghu, freed from all past attachments and grievances. However, few successful people can complete this ritual. And this is all because for the enemies whom they started throughout Jianghu during their lives, this is a great opportunity to take revenge and especially if we are talking about the Empress of Swords who forced countless people regardless of whether they belonged to or not orthodox or heterodox sects, to suffer a defeat more ignominious than death. She said that a large number of martial artists whom they had never seen would flock to this place and the more people, the more news they would be able to hear. She said that they might even be able to get information about the incident that happened to Elder Lu's family. Lu looked at her with a dissatisfied look and asked her not to raise this issue and it was not her problem. He looked at her for a few seconds and concluded that she wanted to use this incident as an excuse to get closer and take a walk around the city. She said that the elder misunderstood everything. But at that moment the elder had already turned around and began to walk towards the house and told her that if she wanted to live a day longer, I had better listen to his words. He said that the best thing for her would be to remain invisible like a mouse. Lu asked her what the Wudang sect will do to her if they see her. Lu he said that he couldn't go with her because he was wanted and if people in the city saw an old man carrying a child on his back they would immediately suspect him. She said that I don't know all the problems that the elder has, but she has her own reason why she came to ask the elder for this favor. He turned his head back and saw that she was holding his granddaughter Sol in her arms. She said that she and Sol are like mother and daughter and if Sol is with her all the time they will look like an ordinary family. She said that even in the worst case, the ritual of returning to a virtuous life does not allow fighting between individuals and there is no need to worry about it because they will be fine because the moment someone personally draws their sword in Boyong County he will be the enemy of all Murim. She said they could just watch the retirement ceremony from afar. Lu thought that her words made sense and from his point of view, he was practically not risking anything. He thought that this was also an opportunity for him to personally find those behind the incident with his family. She said that she was very glad that she could go to the city with her father. Lu asked since when did he become a father to her and she became a daughter to him. She was happy because the elder agreed to her proposal and joyful women's screams and laughter were heard near their house. Night fell in the city and it was dark but thanks to the lanterns the city looked very bright. People were walking along the streets of the city and despite the fact that it was already quite late there were a large number of people on the street. The man told his friends that he could not even think of the fact that they would have the opportunity to personally see the Empress of Swords that they had only heard about and he was looking forward to this moment. He said that in any case everything will be fine because representatives of the orthodox or non-orthodox sects will want to attack her and take revenge. He said that he heard that the Empress of Swords not only has incredible martial arts, but also has no equal in beauty. The guy in the center said that in this case he should try to get closer to her. The guy asked his friend to be quiet and not say such words because they might get into trouble. But suddenly a man appeared behind him and started coughing. This man apologized for passing by and diverting their attention. The guy looked at this old man in surprise and didn't understand where he came from here. This guy looked at the old man and the girl with the child and said that he was very surprised because a whole family came to watch this performance. She asked her father if he wanted something to eat. He replied that he wouldn't mind a bowl of flatbread. She said that father could eat something better than just a bowl of noodles and the young master gave them a good allowance. Lu replied that he was very surprised that they had become so close lately. Lu said that he still cannot imagine how she lived in the Wudang sect all this time. She said that I don't understand what her father is talking about and she has never heard of any sect. They approached the establishment and went inside. Lu said that there are a lot of people here, 
they all must be martial artists who came here to see the Empress of Swords. She looked at these people and thought that if these people start singing too much, a fight might break out. So she needs to be careful and it shouldn't be too dangerous thanks to the no-fighting order. Lu noticed something very interesting and said that they should always be prepared for unexpected situations. He said that this place should be good enough to watch over the entire hotel and that's why they should stay here. A few minutes later they were brought meat soup with noodles and dumplings that they had not ordered. She looked at the child who had already taken the meat kinkle and said that this girl really loves to eat. Lu listened to the dialogues of people who said that the real owner of the cheerful inn is the Empress of Swords. People said that the money to expand this courtyard also came from the Sword Empress's personal fund. Lu continued to drink his tea and thought that these rumors were not confirmed by anything, most likely they were just ordinary words. Suddenly a girl appeared in the establishment and an expensive, high-quality sword hung on her belt. The girl took a few steps forward and stopped, people slowly began to fall silent when they saw her. The guy was telling a story about how all the enemies were scared to death after he pulled his sword out of its sheath. He looked at the entrance and saw a girl who had just entered and said now something will happen. The bald guy turned his head and was shocked when he saw this girl. He was so surprised and scared that he dropped his chopsticks on the floor. One of the visitors shouted very loudly that the Empress of Swords herself had come here and all the people looked at her with a shocking, surprised look. She walked forward along the corridor and caught other people's gazes on her. Lu I watched her from the upper floors and you are very surprised to see the lady in this place right now. She was a very beautiful girl with long hair that broke in the wind and left a trace. They looked at this girl carefully and tried to understand why she came and what she wanted to do here. The Empress of Swords walked very slowly through the large hall in which other people were having dinner and she felt that time had stood still and everyone was watching only her. She heard people talking about how they didn't expect her to be so young and look so good. The waiter put a plate of food on her table and said that they hadn't prepared the meat noodle soup for her, which she always orders. The Empress of Swords thanked the waiter. She looked carefully at the plate in which her food was and felt the pleasant smell of this soup. She took the plate in her right hand and raised it, after which she drank the broth that was in the plate. The Empress put the swords and put the plate on the table. She smiled and said that she had been waiting for a very long time to eat this delicious soup and it was because of this taste that she could not stop coming back here. People turned their heads back to her and looked at this girl in surprise because she did not live up to their expectations at all. People discussed the fact that she doesn't look like Empress Mitch at all and outwardly this girl looks like an ordinary girl and they don't feel fear when they look at her. People discussed among themselves that the rumors, as always, were exaggerated and that the Empress of Swords did not look as dangerous as they said about her. Lu listened to the stories and discussions of the men at the neighboring tables and he did not understand why they were so ignorant and said Alberta words to the Empress of Swords. He looked down again to look at the Empress of Swords again and suddenly she disappeared somewhere, but he didn't even have time to notice when she did it. The guy with the scar on his face drank broth from his plate and said that the Empress of Swords looked like her usual weak girl. She walked to his desk and asked do all martial artists have to be serious and stern? Lu thought that he didn't even have time to feel her movement and despite the fact that he has been traveling around the world for several decades, he has never seen anything like it. The Empress of Swords said that if this guy thinks that strong people should be rude and ignorant, he is mistaken and after that she smiled. The guy with the scar on his face said that his idea of a strong person is much better than her because she looks like a girl who doesn't know how to handle a kitchen knife. She smiled and said that she could give him the opportunity to test her in his strength and find out who she really is. The guy with the scar on his face immediately left the table and said that he would now calm down this arrogant fool. He grabbed the sword with his hand and said that now he would cut her body in half. Suddenly there was a quick flash and a very lightning strike that few people had time to notice. She stood still and it seemed like she wasn't even moving. But at that moment something very strange happened. The guy didn't even have time to take his sword out of its sheath before his head was cut off and flew into the air. Lu was very surprised when he saw all this and did not understand how he should react to the abilities of this lady. His head fell to the floor and froze with a terrible expression on his face. The guy with the scar on his face I realized that it was all just an illusion and with the help of her power she showed what could happen to him if he resists. Lu realized that if she had pulled out the sword a little earlier, his head would actually have been cut off. Lu I understood that the best thing in this situation is that this guy understands what could happen to him. He lowered his head and, together with his friend, 
bowed to the lady and changed for his words. He said that there was a misunderstanding between them. She was very angry with him for his insulting words and at that moment she looked very angry. She said that such offensive words cannot be called misunderstanding. He looked at her in fear and did not understand what to do. The Empress of Swords smiled and said that most likely they also did not quite understand her correctly. She turned around and told them that I couldn't continue enjoying the food before they left and at that moment she turned around and walked to her table. Lu understood that he could not even imagine all the power that this mistress possessed. Lu walked out of the establishment with his partner, and she said that he could not even imagine that they had just seen the Empress of Swords in person. She said she knew it was foolhardy to come here, but she's very glad they did it. Lu told her that he congratulated her on the fulfillment of her wish and now it was time for them to return to the mountain. She replied that they could not leave so quickly because her resignation ceremony would take place soon. He replied that this is not the place where they can get information. Suddenly a guy passing by shouted that he saw the leader of the Muram Alliance and the rest of the people began to run in this direction in order to also see him. Lu looked forward and realized that it was indeed the leader of the Muram Alliance, accompanied by the rest of the outstanding warriors. The lady walked forward and did not pay attention to the passing people who constantly stared at her and admired her. Lu forward and only now realized why he had been feeling an incredibly strong aura all this time. He thought that among all these people there was someone who framed him and destroyed his family. He said that there were a lot of them and it would be a big mistake if they didn't just leave here, and so he suggested that she go watch you from afar. She was happy and said that she was very glad that her father made such a decision. He said that in any case he had never seen this leader of the Muram Alliance and asked at what point did she become the leader. She replied that it was about a year ago that there was a big commotion in Jianghu because a member of the MA sect had become the youngest leader of the alliance. Lu thought that if it was a year ago, then the time coincides with the tragedy of his family. She said that people are telling and spreading rumors that the leader's eye was damaged by the Empress of Swords. But these are just rumors. Lu continued to walk forward. Behind you, suddenly the crowd stopped and no one understood what was happening. Warriors from the Marine Alliance Black hear the road and do not allow other people to pass. The warrior shouted very loudly that all people needed to go back and they could not participate in the resignation ceremony. People shouted that they had been coming here for ten days to see this and were not ready to come back. People were indignant and asked these warriors why can these warriors in black clothes get through to ordinary people who can't get there. Lu I understood that the people in black clothes were the elite squad and these scum of the isolation Murima prepared something and what is it to be afraid of these people. The warrior held the sword behind his back and tried not to show this sword right away. He raised his sword up and demonstratively showed it to all the people who were in front of him. He struck with his sword and cut the air into two halves and left a mark. He said that from now on this line will be the border between life and death and everyone who crosses this line will be killed. He said that anyone who wants to die can cross this line and take responsibility for their life. Lu asked who is the guy who just made a sword strike. She replied that this is the merciless dragon sword Wang Hull and he is one of the three great swordsmen in Sichuan. She said that he is a very tough person who never spares in life those who cross their sword with him. Van Hull said he said that this way of calming people down always works and as expected, no one dared to pass by him. Suddenly, a voice appeared from above in the air and asked respected brothers to this place. People raised their heads up and tried to understand where this sound came from, they did not know what was happening and where the person who was speaking so loudly was. Lu understood that someone used sound transmission over a large area and he never thought that living with me would experience this for himself. The guy turned his head back and saw that a girl appeared after him. He was shocked when he saw this girl and could not believe his eyes because she was very close to him. The sword empress was very close to him and was holding a cup of warm water in her hand. People shouted very loudly that the empress of swords was now very close to them and they could not believe that she would be here. She held a cup in her hand and waited for the rest of the people to step aside and make way for her. She made a rapid leap forward and was able to run a very long distance in one second. She stopped behind the line that Van made on the ground with his sword. The Empress of Swords asked what she should do now because she had crossed the line and should be punished. After that she drank tea from her cup. She smiled and looked at him with confused eyes. The Empress of Swords said that if no one attacks her now, then she will not waste time here and asked for forgiveness and flew away. 
The merciless sword dragon completely froze and was confused and at that moment people shouted that now they have a chance to get there. People that I can't get there if they run in a crowd. Van put his sword forward and said that he would kill everyone who crossed this line and he would not repeat this a second time. Lou he said that the strong prey on the weak, he doesn't like it and most likely they won't be able to enter anyway, so it's better for them to go back home. They said that Sol was sleeping very soundly. Lou he said that sleeping after a delicious meal is always good. Suddenly we felt some very strong vibration and did not understand what happened. She said that most likely the ritual of returning to a virtuous life has already begun. Lou thought that given that the shock waves are not constant, this is an unfair duel and it is most likely that the elders from the orthodox sects have completely abandoned their pride. He saw a bright light in the distance and this flash was incredibly large and fast. The Empress of Swords jumped from the top floor of the building and moved back to the people. She landed near the soldiers and stopped in place. The soldier was incredibly scared when he saw her near him and shouted that the Empress of Swords had come here to punish them. She made a blow and a sudden flash after this blow threw the soldiers in different directions. All the people who were on the ground watched as the Empress of Swords flew very quickly in the air. The Empress of Swords saw that there was a little girl standing on earth and next to him, a child being held by a girl. She smiled when she saw these guys below and winked at them to show her goodwill. After that, she made another swift leap forward and disappeared. Lu was very surprised because he didn't understand why the Empress of Swords just winked at them during the flight. Large red flashes appeared near a distant building, and there were more and more of them every second. Murim leader ordered her warriors to prevent the Empress of Swords from escaping. Lu understood that all the people who were now chasing her were the best martial artists who were among the top 10 best masters. People watched this whole performance and said that they were all united against the Empress of Swords and they wondered what happened. People shouted that if they ran after them, I would not be able to see what was happening there and this was their chance to follow the Empress of Swords. Lu stood still and watched as large crowds of people ran past him like flashes and chased after the Empress. He couldn't even imagine that he could see all this today with his own eyes. Lu saw hundreds of people fly into the air and thought there that he could live to see such a spectacle when more than 1,000 martial artists perform body lighting techniques and embroider the night sky. She grabbed his hand in his clothes and said that his father should not stand still. She pulled him along and said that now there was no time to stand in a daze and they must see the decisive battle between the leader of the alliance and Rome and the Empress of Swords. Lu grabbed her shoulder and asked her to stop. He said he was too old to run around the streets and watch other warriors fight. She looked at him in surprise and said that this was not at all true. Lu said that it would be very difficult for them to chase people who run as fast as lightning and, moreover, they must not forget that she is carrying a child on her body. He looked at the sky and said that besides, most of them are probably now chasing in the wrong direction. She said that in this case she thinks there is no other way. Lu said that in Jianghu the more curious you are, the shorter your life will be. He said that since she is still young, someday she will also have a chance. She obediently replied that grandfather was right and she trusted his words. There were a lot of stones in the mountains and you could hear someone making their way over these stones. They ran forward very quickly, jumping over stone to stone and constantly picking up speed. Lu turned his head at her and said that if she doesn't want anything or in the mountains she needs to speed up. He asked why her art of body relief is so pitiful and even when she was called the best among the second generation students but she still moves slowly. She replied that grandpa was just too fast. Pa. Lu said that from what he had seen earlier, it looked like the sword empress was suffering from internal injuries and her face was pale. She asked if something bad could happen to her because of this. Lu remembered her face and said that he didn't know what could happen to her, but she looked pretty carefree. She said that she hoped that everything would be okay with the Empress of Swords. Lu asked her, shouldn't she be rooting for the Murima Alliance? And wasn't she a member of the Wudang sector? They suddenly stopped and the old man said that they could not go further and now they needed to move as little as possible for a while. Lu asked her to hide her presence because he felt that there was something nearby. He came closer to the bushes and carefully examined everything that was happening nearby using a hole in the bushes. They saw that near them there was a battlefield on which many wounded and killed soldiers lay. Lu said that he deliberately chose the path going through the mountains to avoid meeting martial arts masters. She said that there was some kind of terrible sight here, most likely there was a fierce battle here. 
Lu turned his head back and saw the silhouette of a man approaching him and coughing. Lu saw this man's face and realized that this man is Dugu Song who is the strongest martial artist of the Muram Alliance and now he is here on the verge of death. Lu Ai saw that an old man was lying near the stone and was practically already dead. He wanted to know what kind of battle took place here. She recognized this man and thought that this was the same Hyuk and that a wounded elder of the Wudang sect, Taoist Master Jin, was lying near the stone gone. She hoped that she would not be recognized. The old man saw this girl and said that he did not expect to see Hyun Hee here and asked her to come closer to him. Hyun Hee was upset because this old man recognized her and now she didn't know what to do. Jean Gan asked her why she pretended not to know him. He said that he took care of her for many years. Lu He approached this dying old man and said that most likely this old man was mistaken. The old man once again asked the girl to come to him before he died and the girl, like a quick stream of air, moved closer to him. Hyun He asked her if he called her. Lu thought that she moved reflexively in response to commands and most likely she knew this person. Jin Gan raised his dearest hand and pointed to the girl who was sitting not far from him and said that he was in such a state because of this girl. Hyun He was shocked when she saw the girl her master pointed out. The Empress of Swords at that moment was sitting near a tree and meditating with her eyes closed, she was accumulating chakra and energy in her body. Lu understood that the Empress of Swords was now redirecting her chi energy throughout her body and she had serious internal injuries, but what surprised him most was how she was hiding her crime. Jin Gan took his sword and gave it to Hyun He. He ordered her to kill the Empress of Swords because she would not be able to move now and she could be killed with one blow. He said that if she kills the Empress of Swords now, not only will she not ask about what happened during this time, but she will also make her a hero of the Muram Alliance. Hyun He imagined that she could actually make Rome the hero of the Alliance and everyone would worship and admire her. She was shocked because she could become a hero and return to Wudang Mountain. Jin Gan told her that when this happens, she will become the first elder sister and there is no one other than her who would be more suitable to be the head of the great Wudang sect in the future. She asked, will she really keep her promise? Hyun He slowly pulled her sword out of its sheath and said that the elder always took great care of her. She cut the elder's throat and cut off his head immediately after drawing her sword. She remembered all the bullying and vile things he did to her and said that the elder still takes her for nothing. Jin Gan said that she was a crazy fool and now she would regret this action. Hyun He was shocked when she saw that the elder was able to protect his life on important organs in such a situation and not get injured. A red flash flew near her shoulder and she was scared because she didn't know what it was. The spear pierced the elder's body and chained him to a stone and now he would not be able to free himself after such a wound. Lu pierced this vile old man with his spear and caused him critical damage. Lu pulled the spear from his chest and at that moment a large amount of blood splashed out of the elder's body. Jin Gan said that they were disgusting scum and promised that they would not sleep peacefully after this act that they had just committed. He said that the alliance leader will be here soon and the Wudang sect will also arrive here as reinforcements along with the first generation disciple Chang Meng. Lu took off his hat and asked this elder if he knew his face. Jin Gan said that he knows who is standing in front of him now and he knows that this is the best spearman from Shangxi. Jin Gan asked him, weren't they comrades who united more than 40 years ago in the conquest squad of the Muram Alliance to fight the demonic cult? Lu said that he will be the one asking questions first. Lu asked this elder if he knew why his children were brutally killed by the Muram Alliance. Jin Gan looked away and said that he didn't know why this happened, his voice was clear that he was being disingenuous. Lu said that this elder does not know who did it. But nevertheless, he does not deny your fact that it was he and the Muram Alliance who were behind this. Jin Gan began to make excuses and said that he knew nothing and should not talk about this topic in such a place. Lu presented the spear to his chest and said that now they need to say goodbye and he will listen to all his excuses in hell. Jin Gan at that moment called his opponent all possible curses, but nevertheless the spear penetrated his chest and tore his heart with its blade. Lu looked at this elder with contempt and hostility because this was one of those people who was involved in the murder of his family. Jin Gan coughed up blood as the spear completely pierced his heart. Lu said that it doesn't matter now or before, his self-confidence remained the same and now they need to leave here. Sol at that moment came out of the bag and said that the Sword Empress was still here. Lu asked your granddaughter when did she wake up? 
Lu was very surprised that his granddaughter learned the name of the Sword Empress, but nevertheless he realized that she was right and something needed to be done with her. Lu Ha said that maybe they don't know each other, but since this is also fate, he will take the Sword Empress to a safe place if she doesn't want him to do this. He asked her to nod her head. Lu said that most likely she was still channeling her qi energy, he was wondering if anything would happen if he touched her. He said that people say that those who are still at this level do not have any restrictions due to the free movement of blood vessels, if they decide, they will be able to show their power any time they want. Lu took her on his shoulder and told Han He that if she had tried to harm the Empress of Swords as the Elder had told her, the two of them would be dead by now. Lu shouted that they should immediately go to Yangzhou Mountain. Hyun He asked, could it be that the Lu are thinking about taking her home? He replied that they had already made a decision and there was no turning back. The sun was already emerging from the horizon and dawn was coming. Hyun He said that such a journey was probably too difficult for grandfather. Lu, replied that he did all the hard work and was a little tired, but Hyun He was also great and did a good job. Hyun He said that she could also carry the Empress of Swords. Lu said that she suggested it very timely when they had already reached the house. Lu said that since this is a woman who needs to recover and he needs to rest, they don't need Hyun He at the moment and therefore can return to the mountain. Hyun He said that if you are getting old and don't need any help with anything, he can call her at any time. He replied that if he calls her, then his burden will only increase. Hyun He said that she understood and then she will return with food and medicine for the elder. Lu sat down on a bench in his yard and stretched his shoulder. He said that his whole body hurt and he didn't understand why he had to go through such difficulties when he was already very old. Sol came up to her grandfather and started shouting the word meat very loudly. He looked at the girl and was very surprised that the word meat was shouting loudly. He asked his granddaughter if she wanted to eat. Lu I heard that she began to shout the words meat even louder and remembered the saying that plowing a field is easier than taking care of a child. He said that he already understood that she was hungry and would come and cook her meat soup. But as soon as the elder walked through his garden, he felt very strong pain in his body and realized that his tumor was making itself felt again. He tried to resist more and said that he should just take a pill to suppress nervous tension, but he didn't have any pills in his pocket and thought that they might have fallen out after he had been using the body relief technique all night. He fell to the ground and died in pain and at that moment his granddaughter ran to him. Sol cried and screamed that grandpa was feeling very bad. Lu thought that he would die now if he did not take the medicine and this would be a real failure. He said goodbye to his granddaughter and asked me for forgiveness for not being able to live longer. At that moment, the Empress of Swords woke up and yawned very loudly after that. How she woke up. She said that she had not slept so well for a long time. At that moment she saw an old man and a little girl lying on the ground on the street. Sol turned her head towards the Empress of Swords and looked at her with her childish, tear-stained eyes. The Empress of Swords looked at this whole situation and thought that she would like to drink tea after she woke up, but apparently she would have to change her plans. 